for the Heisman Trophy. Get set for college football, 1997. It's West Virginia and Marshall next. <laughs> and West Virginia are going to play football this afternoon at Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia. You can call it the front yard brawl. You can call it Mountain Thunder, but it's going to be football, and we'll have all of it for you coming up this afternoon. Welcome, everyone, to Morgantown. I'm John Sanders, working with Jeff Bostic. We've been on for a half an hour with the pregame show and haven't been able to hear each other yet. It's that way in the stadium. 70,000 people excited about this opener. West Virginia, very good football team. Marshall stepping up to that next level. They're going to play Division 1A. We're going to see what happens. They've been very successful at 1AA. We'll see what happens at this field today. And we'll see Randy Moss, who's making the step up to Division 1A. He has nothing left to prove at AA. Unbelievable last year. 29 touchdowns, 28 through the air, 1,700 yards. He tied the touchdown receiving record in a single season with a guy that's fairly good, Jerry Rice. But he'll go up against a defense that was number one in the nation last year, and the Mountaineers defensively look strong again this year. Only gave up 217 yards last season. The coaching staff thinks that this team can be just as good defensively. It starts up front. Those front four are very talented. Marshall will have to find a way to block them. Eight of the 11 starters on the Mountaineer defense return for 1997. Everybody is pumped up for this game. The offenses, the defenses, the coaches, the fans. We are, and we hope that you are as well. Stay with us. We'll be back to Morgantown, West Virginia for the kickoff. Marshall and West Virginia is coming up. To get we are back for Marshall and West Virginia getting set for the opening kickoff. We talked about the warmth, the sunshine, the weather this afternoon. Right now it's 70 degrees, expected to go up to maybe close to 80 before we're finished this afternoon. The wind from the northwest at four miles an hour. Expected to be mild, but also under the sunshine, it will be warm. And certainly a Hall of Fame look, Jeff Bostic, to the opening coin toss. Frank Gadsky, Sam Huff, two NFL Hall of Famers. You can call it Mountain Thunder, but it's going <laughs> to... All right, we are underway. The kick is taken by Moss at about the 12. He's at the 20, the 25, and knocked down as he gets to about the 28-yard line. The thundering will, herd will start at the 28, first and 10. Chad Pennington coming back. He had a terrific freshman season and then sat out all of last year, but he'll be the quarterback this afternoon for Marshall. Talk to Steve Dunlap, the defensive coordinator, very impressed with Pennington. And the officials are calling time before the first snap. They forgot to get the kicking tee off the field. Forgot the little things. We're just underway. There's Chad Pennington, the sophomore from Knoxville. And Chad, in 95, hit 62% of his passes. 15 touchdowns and only five interceptions. He is back to lead this thundering herd offense. Lone setback is Chapman. They've got four wideouts, two split each way, and they run it up the middle to about the 35-yard line. It set the rest of this starting lineup as Chapman takes the opening carry out to the 35. Randy Moss, of course. It's brought to you by Huntington Banks. Chapman is the tailback. Wicks, Colclaw, John White, the tight end. Those are the receivers. And John Wade anchors a strong offensive line. He did a very good job on Thornton, gaining seven yards on first down, John. Now they spread three receivers to the left side. Tied in on the right side. There's the quick pass. Caught at the 30. Diving forward is Colclaw. We have a flag down on the field near the 40-yard line. Colclaw apparently has enough for a first down, but let's wait and see what the officials have to say. It is going to go against the thundering herd. There is head coach Don Nealon in his 18th season. And Don, of course, is the man. He's now president of the American Football Coaches Association. Senior, the Repeat the name. 
so much is made about Randy Moss and his catching ability, his, his, his elusiveness, running the ball. He got called for holding there, trying to help his teammates. Football comes all the way back now to the 23. There is Stills along that line, along with Slay, Thornton, Baum. Of course, Stills' job is to replace Knute Curtis, who was just one of the best in the country last year. Second down and about 10 to go after the holding penalty. Pennington looks right, throws, catch is made, and spinning out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. Again, it's Cole Clark. And you can see that they're going to go to him and use the other guy right now. Moss is a decoy. They're going to Cole Claw. You've got to be impressed with Marshall's offense. Multiple offensive looks. Three wide receivers on one side. They're trying to stretch the West Virginia defense. Try and find some seams. Yesterday, had a long visit with Tom Nunez, the offensive coordinator. He said last year West Virginia's defense had some holes. They're going to try and find them. And now Pennington wants to make sure of the formation as he moves Gerald Long, who played at West Virginia, to back to the other side, and they'll go from the shotgun on third down and five. First possession of the afternoon for the Thundering Herd. And the sack. Hit at the 25. The football comes loose, but he is down. And there comes that pressure up the middle that we expected to see. Last season, 680 snaps. Steve Dunlap's. That's Bob Baum who made the hit. Fortunately for, fortunately for Marshall, it was a delay of game. Speaking, speaking with Steve Dunlap yesterday, they're not a defense that's going to sit back on their heels. 680 snaps last year. They blitz people 280 downs almost every third down. Baum had nine sacks a year ago. Thornton had eight. And Henry Slay had eight. Just underway from Morgantown again out of the shotgun. It's third down and ten after the delay. And then Marshall drawing West Virginia offside. The play continues. The flags are down. A catch at the 30, trying to spin outside, and down he goes, right about the 30-yard line. See what the call is. Gerald Long made the catch of the ball, and Long was dropped at the 30. Well, I think this call is going to go against the Mountaineers, so kind of a sputtering start. A penalty almost every other play on this opening drive. West Virginia had a chance to get off the field. The defense makes one of those penalties. That Offside. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. They commit one of those penalties that gives Coach Nealon gray hair. You're talking about a guy that's been very successful in home openers, 14-2-1 the last 17 years. And you talk about a class man in college football, Don Nealon is that guy. Still the opening possession of the first quarter. And the crowd has not settled in as yet, neither of the players. Moss in motion, and we've got some movement up front. Almost to be expected, I think, Jeff, because of all the excitement, the noise, they've waited, and they're, they're so anxious. Well, this is one thing that you're talking about, a Marshall team. You see the right tackle. Jamie Rogers moves a little bit. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Well, where we are is at the original line of scrimmage, and it's third down. Well, this Marshall team since 1991 have averaged 10 home games per season. That's incredible. This year, they only have five home games. First two games are on the road here and next week at Army. And you can see Pennington changing things at the line of scrimmage as they go from the gun. Looking left, throwing left, he throws short. Intended for Mark Wicks. And the Thundering Herd will have to punt. Moss was not the target of any of the passes in that opening drive. That may be intentional, John. Everybody knows that this guy's a big-time player, Heisman candidate. Break him into the game slowly. He may be a decoy for some of the other receivers. There's Chris Hampton. Hanson getting ready to kick. Nate Terry is back to receive the punt, standing at his own 30-yard line. John Seamaster is the snapper, and that kick is blocked. 
picked up. Touchdown. West Virginia gets the touchdown. It's Gary Tompkins, number 11. The snap was a little low, and the pressure was there. Josh Seamster, the long snapper. The ball was on the ground. Hansen had a hard time handling it. Great job by the West Virginia special team, something they have paid a lot of attention to during the preseason. Last season, special teams really hurt this West Virginia team in two games in particular, the Miami game and Syracuse. Extra emphasis has been placed on it. It pays off in the first series of the game. Jay Taylor for the extra point. The Mountaineers, thanks to the defense, the special teams defense, going up seven to nothing. 12 minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. The Mountaineer offense has not been on the field yet this afternoon, but they are celebrating in Morgantown. It's seven nothing. The Mountaineers lead the thundering herd. Well, you talk about special teams. We spoke earlier how it cost them. Off the left edge, Gary Tompkins, Gets on the shoulder. Hansen has no chance. It started with the snap. Seems to put the ball on the ground. Hansen didn't handle it very clearly. Big play. Not only does he block it, picks it up and <laughs> scores with it. That's double celebration for him. He got the block. He picked up the loose football, took it in for a 7-0 lead. So Coach Pruitt's team is going to start from behind. This is not the type of start he wanted coming in. I love the first play of the game. Big run, seven-yard gain. Unfortunately, they were their own worst enemy, and you can expect this early in the season. Penalties on both teams. But Marshall had an opportunity to move the chains, gain a first down, keep possession of the ball, and probably more importantly, John, keep this, this crowd as quiet as possible. It did not work out because of the block kick. Taylor kicking off for the second time, and Moss is back two yards deep. No, it's not Moss. It's Wicks in the end zone at the 15, and they wrestle him down right at the 15-yard line. So they will start from inside the 20-yard line on their second possession. Wicks on the return out to the 15. And let's see if this offense and defense has settled down after that first series. West Virginia has scored, leading 7-0 over the thundering herd. Doesn't seem as if anybody on that sideline for Marshall's panicked yet. I've been very impressed with the way their offensive line has come out and handled itself early. Pennington now with the lone setback Chapman. Drops the pass, looks and throws, catches made it to 20. Stretching out is Moss, his first reception of the afternoon. He gets to the 24-yard line, a gain of nine. Six foot five, 215 pounds, a blazer. He is the best wide receiver in college football. He's the only college or pro player, John, I've ever seen that's got his own website. You can reach him at www.randymoss.com. A lot of publicity, some notoriety, and Moss splits out wide right. He got nine on his first catch of the afternoon. Pennington looking, looking, and throws it away. There is a flag down. And Pruitt, that time having to pull long off the field. Now he says, okay, okay. <laughs> now they tried to go again to Moss, but they held him up pretty good that time. I think what they're going to call is interference on Perlo Bastine. Or maybe holding. Had a pretty good grip on his jersey. That's about the only way you can defend Moss. I was going to say, if you're one-on-one -on -one against Moss, what else are you going to do? Bobby Bowden said it best. If you're covering uh, Mr. Moss one-on-one, -on -one, hold your hat. And Coach Pruitt had his say. The officials have made the call. Pass interference on the defense. First down. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Football will come out to the 31-yard line. It is the initial first down for Coach Pruitt and all he did in his first season oh, coming back to Marshall where he was an assistant coach where he played is go 15 and 0 and win a national championship. Last year's team had 11 All-Americans and 19 All-Conference performers. That's unbelievable. 19 out of 22 All-Conference performers. Yeah, I'd say that's unbelievable. 
You see Chapman, the lone setback. Behind Pennington, the play fake, play action, looking down the near side and incomplete. More bumping that time. Once again, intended for Randy Moss down the near sideline, but pretty good coverage defensively by the Mountaineers. Starting with pressure, Gary Steele's you're talking about replacing some big shoes. Knute Curtis, All-American, Buckus Award winner. Everybody you talk to at West Virginia loves Gary Stills. He's one of the ever-ready batteries. He never stops. Moss is split to the right. Two wide receivers to the left, tight end side to the left. Pennington doing a lot of play changing at the line of scrimmage. There's the quick pass in the flat. At about the 35-yard line, it's Cole Claw spinning his way across the 40, but they're going to spot him down near the 38. It's a gain of about eight. This Marshall offense is going to try and take and pick and choose when it can go long, throw the little short passes. These little seven and eight-yard passes serve to them just like a first-yard first-down run. They're gaining six, seven yards, and what they're doing, they're staying out of that third and long situation. Well, this is an outstanding offense. They averaged almost 44 points a game and near over 485 yards of offense per game last year. From behind, they got it. Pennington is slammed down from behind, and he was busted that time defensively. It's Gary Stills, number 55. Tough job for the left tackle. Mike Gillums, sophomore, 300-pounder. We talk about Steels. He is a guy that runs a legitimate 4-5. He gets on the edge. Gillums can't get back quick enough. Pennington is the one that pays. And on third and 11, the Thundering Herd is going to try to get it out of trouble. Stills charging in from that side. The right side linebacker made the hit, made the sack. O'Neal hoping for better success with his second effort of the afternoon. And he gets it. That's a good kick. It'll chase Terry back. He bobbles it, bobbles it, picks it up in the end zone. Now he tries to come out, and he's tackled in his own end zone. I'll tell you what. There's a little bit of everything going on here. It was a 61-yard punt that he boomed. Summers was down on the coverage. And the ball will come to the 20. I guess he's very fortunate, Jeff, that he did not get out. That's the only thing about a punt returner. When the ball is kicked over your head, you have no idea what part of the field you're on. 61-yard punt. A beautiful kick. West Virginia will start offensively for the first time with 10-17 left in the first quarter and a 7-0 lead. Part has given West Virginia a 7-0 lead here in Morgantown with 10-17 remaining in the first quarter. And this is the first time that Mark Bulger and the offense have been on the field. Bulger is the red shirt sophomore out of Central Catholic High School. That's a pretty well-known high school. They had another little quarterback leave there in the uh, mid-70s, uh, Dan Marino. Yeah, Dan Marino. Went on to have a pretty good career. And up the middle. It's Zaraway, and this is what we expect to see from the Mountaineers. Zaraway fights his way across the 25 to the 26. He had a terrific freshman year, and Huntington Banks will bring you the West Virginia lineup. You see Zaraway, certainly the key, over 1,000 yards as a freshman. The flanker backs and the receivers, Foreman. Wobble is the tight end, and along that line, Huntington Banks offensive line, Solomon Page, a sophomore tackle. Ford to grow. This is a very smart offensive line. Ball is at the 26. Second down and four. Foreman is the motion man. Zaraway, knife down as he get to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a half a yard. Big hit down low that time defensively by Grace. And let's set it up. We talked a little bit in the pregame show about B.J. Cohen. Part of that defensive line and the Huntington Banks linebackers. O'Neill, a sophomore at the outside, leads the way there. And we have met B.J. Summers. And let's go back and take another look at that hit. You know, this is the type of matchup. Uh, West Virginia wants to play smash mouth. Well, John Gray says, well, bring it on. Third down and four. Again, it's Foreman in motion. 
Play fake. Bolger's got some room on the left side. He's going to tuck it under and go for the first down. He'll get there. Outside the 30 to the 31-yard line. Heads up play by the quarterback. Shows a lot of mobility, but also Sean Foreman, his wide receiver, was open to be thrown to. He comes back when he sees that the Bolger's going to take it and run. Comes back, delivers a great block. The initial first down for the West Virginia offense at the 31-yard line. You know this young man's got some butterflies in his stomach. He's been waiting for this moment for a while. Johnston, of course, was at the helm here for a number of years for West Virginia. But now it's Bolger's team. It's first down at the 31-yard line. Oswega in motion. Saraway, nifty move there. Gets to the 35, drifts away from one tackle. Now the flag down. He got almost 10 yards on the play, but we'll see if this is against the offense on the play as he spun away from a couple of tackles and got out to the 40-yard line. Again, it was Grace coming up to make the tackle. The penalty is going to be against the Thundering Herd. Amos Zaraway, just a sophomore. Coming into your living room, ladies and gentlemen, you're talking about a powerful running back. Grabbing the face mask. Defense, 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. You're talking about a powerful running back, 5'10", 200 pounds. Talk to the coaches in the weight room. This guy bench presses over 450 pounds, 1,035 yards last year. And he did that with a turf toe about midway through the season. And I don't think a lot of people realize how a turf toe can affect you. It's ended careers look at some those, players. Look at those arms on Zeroway. Just inside the 45-yard line. West Virginia on the move. Play fake. Pass is low, but it is caught by Sean Foreman. The Junior from Chesapeake, Virginia. And every play, every pass is going to make Mark Bolger just a little more comfortable at that quarterback slot. What would probably make him more comfortable is David Saunders, the All-American wide receiver who tore up his knee early in fall practice, is out for the season. Uh, Carlos Asaguayo is going to have to pick up the slack. Sean Foreman will pick it up. But the big thing for Bolger is having number 20 in the backfield. He is the lone setback and has the football. Dancing inside the 35, down to about the 32. Should be enough for another West Virginia first down. Ozeraway well, just keeps pounding away, and you look at the size difference, the matchup for the offensive line of the Mountaineers averages 290 pounds per man, going against the defense that's about 250. Great job by the center, Eric DeGroe. He's blocking on Ricky Hall. You talk about the size differential. Ricky Hall was a former fullback. Now, a nose guard, 265 pounds. DeGroe goes in about 290. And you talked about the intelligence of this offensive line, John. Three of them are in pre-med. And they have a terrific medical school here at West Virginia. It's a play fake. Going deep down the middle. Just overthrown down that far sideline. Intended for Foreman. Larry Moore was covering on the play. There is, you see, number 28, Larry McLeod. Led his team with 150 tackles a year ago. He's been their leading tackler both years, third-year guy. He's the heart and soul of this defense. They're a little bit undermanned up front. Probably spotting 30 to 40 pounds per lineman up front, but Larry McLeod is a football player. It is second down and 10. The ball at the 32 yard line of Marshall. It's Zaraway. Split the seam, gets it inside the 30, down to about the 28 yard line. Another big stick by John Grace. He's been in about three tackles. Zaraway. Zaraway is a powerful man. You're talking about a guy that's going to be a great one. Solomon Page, six foot six, 290 pounds, gets Cohen upfield. Remember this name. Remember this name, Solomon Page. Just a sophomore, he's going to be a great player here in West Virginia. Out of Brashear High School in Pittsburgh, Western Pennsylvania, known for producing outstanding football players. There's the quick pass. It's complete for Penn. Knocked him down. That is Wable, the tight end. And he's all the way. That was a quick pass over the middle, and Wable was wide open. Six foot five, 260 pound senior. We talked about the intelligence. 
We talked about the intelligence. You look at you look at the linebacker. You look at John Grace. Did he not get back in coverage? Wable is one of those pre-med students. Over a 3-0 GPA. Been here for four years. Experienced the great times. Hoping to continue that his senior year. Thomas Maxwell had to come up and make the hit. The ball is at the 10-yard line. The Mountaineers are on the move with 6-12 remaining first quarter. West Virginia leading 7-0. Zaraway cuts it at the 5. There's a move. Dives for the end zone. Touchdown. Boy, a couple of great moves by Amos Zaraway. He got nine touchdowns. Last year, he gets his first for 97. A 10-yard touchdown, and the Mountaineers go up 13-0. John, there's a lot of things you can't coach. Watch these moves. Open field, one-on-one -on -one with Zaraway. No way. Defender barely gets a hand on him. Great balance, great desire, and he finds the pay dirt. The extra point is up and good. 6.04 remaining in the opening quarter. The Mountaineers of West Virginia, following the play of Amos Zaraway, have taken a two-touchdown lead over Marshall. We'll be back to Morgantown. Today's game is brought to you by Kroger. Kick off your next tailgate party with Kroger, your total value leader. By the West Virginia Lottery, providing funds for education, senior citizens, and tourism. When you play, everybody wins. By Bell Atlantic, the heart of communication. By Caterpillar Equipment and Walker Machinery, continuing a tradition of excellence since 1953. And by Huntington Bank, take control of your money. The forecast may have been for mild weather, but it's plenty warm down on the field. You 10 plays, 80 yards, zero away, 36 yards, including the 10-yard touchdown run that makes it 14 to nothing. Mountaineers scored their first touchdown on a blocked punt. Pretty impressive start for the quarterback, Bulger. Very impressive start for Bulger, but as I mentioned earlier, it's great to have number 20 in the backfield. If you make that jersey gray and blue, you can almost see Sanders written on the back of it, Barry Sanders. Built just alike, and they have a lot of the same similarities in running. Well, I knew it wasn't John Sanders. <laughs> you can see Moss is back deep, along with Wicks. And Moss is the one they want to touch the football. He has only one catch so far, and they're going to drive Moss back in the end zone. He will let it go. It'll be first and 10 at the 20. The third possession of the opening quarter, and we have flags all over the place down around the 20 yard line. There's one, two, three or four flags are down. The players mixing it up, and the officials will have to sort it out. 5.59 remaining in the opening quarter. Of course, the one thing that uh, Jay Taylor wants to do is keep that ball away from Randy Moss. And how do you do that? Well, you kick it through the end zone, so Taylor's got to be happy with what he's done so far. And you know what? You, you, you very seldom talk about kickers unless they do something great or bad. You know, look at him. He, he knows he's kicked it pretty well. Taylor's looking. He's looking. He says, yes, it's out of the end zone. Moss only averaged 34 yards per kick return last year. Led NCAA Division we 1. We have multiple eight. fouls on the play. Unsportsmanlike. Kicking team. Unsportsmanlike. Receiving team. We also have a 10-yard block in the back. Penalty be enforced. 10 yards this direction. Now yeah, that causes some grumbling among the West Virginia fans, the old gold and blue that are decked out here. They've been ready for this game for about three quarters of a century that's all and this is a big series for the Marshall offense so they came out early they sputtered had a punt block West Virginia with a very impressive 80 yard drive they're up two touchdowns if Marshall does nothing else they have to establish field position they have to keep West Virginia backed up it's going to be a 15 yard penalty in the signal league game 
that was delay of game, so the ball comes out to the 35, and here's how your college money is being spent, folks. Yeah, here's $20,000 a year on each one of these kids to get their education. It looks like it's working well. Hi, Mom, hi, Dad, send money. <laughs> at the 35, good starting position. The initial drive, they began at the 28-yard line. Thanks to the Moss return of the opening kickoff, this time at the 35. And jumping all over him is Stills as they tried to get outside. Chapman carried the football, but he did not get very far, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. You talk to Steve Dunlap, the defensive coordinator. He salivates when talking about Gary Stills. Cat quick, unbelievable motor, very strong. This guy is going to be one of those that you're going to be talking about this year and the next year. Knut Curtis, we may forget his name by the end of the season. Gary Stills, a true junior. He was a Proposition 48 player. And if he graduates on time, he might get that extra year back. That's a new rule in the NCAA. It's second and 10 out of the shotgun. Pennington, they're all over him, but he gets the pass off. But the 40 to 45, out to midfield. And Marshall picks up good yardage, and here comes a late hit flag. Moss showing his moves, his strength and power that time, got across the 50 and took a late hit. And Pennington showing some courage in the pocket. He got hit by Slay, he got hit by Thornton, he got hit by uh, by Gary Steeles. You see the Steeles get away from him there. This is yards after catch. And there that's, comes the late hit. That's one of those penalties that the coaching staff, they just go completely bonkers over. It cost your team 10 more yards. I think it was Barrett Green that came in late, and Don Nealon does not like that. Dead ball, personal foul. On the defense, 15 yards. Another 15 First yards, foul. so that's 30 yards in penalty. Now let's watch Wade. John Wade, the senior, six foot six, 300 pounds. He gets past the official. He's he gets a little for push somebody. in there. He's still going downfield. And this is what you like seeing in an offensive lineman. Going downfield, trying to help his team. This guy will be an early round draft choice, first or second round. Big, big offensive lineman. Going to play in the blue-gray all-star game. That's quite an honor for the first year in Division 1A for this school and this fine offensive lineman. Thundering Herd is on the move. Leaning forward inside the 30-yard line is Chapman. That center John Wade. Right guard Brian Reed. Brian Reed is an undersized guy. You watch John Wade. You wonder why they're gaining yards up the middle. Great block on Cogdale. The running back's not, you know, these guys are smart. Follow my best offensive lineman. Chapman got seven on that play. He is the lone setback. Marshall is moving. Down to the 27-yard line. Pennington looks incomplete. In and out of the hands of Moss. He had it. Looked like he had a step and could not control it. Once again, Gary Steele's pressuring the quarterback. The quarterback is totally helpless. Back turn, running back. Running back matched up one on one. Great Working on job. Nate Terry. Great job by Nate Terry jamming the line of scrimmage. Almost a great catch. Third down and about three. 4-14 to play, opening quarter. 14-0, West Virginia leads Marshall. Here comes the blitz. Here comes Moss in motion, they look right. Diving catch is made at the 20-yard line. Yes, sir, good catch. Cole Call made the catch, the junior from Glen Arden, Maryland. Nate Terry again on the coverage on that side, but it's first down, thundering herd inside the 21. Pennington with a great throw. West Virginia coming after him. Cole Claw, you talk about athleticism. Stretched out. And, you know, obviously so much attention is paid to Randy Moss. Cole Claw is a quality receiver also. Just outside the 20-yard line. It's Chapman trying to get outside. He does at the 15, the 10. Written down inside the five-yard line from behind that time. Steve Lipp made the tackle, but that's a good run by Doug Chapman. Lippy made the hit. We talked about this being an important series for the Marshall offense. They have responded down to the three-yard line. Chapman, he got hurt yesterday in the walkthrough. 
He ran into Seamster, hurt his chest a little bit. Doesn't seem to be bothering him right now. He has been outstanding on this drive. It is first and goal. They go to the two-back set. Fake to Chapman. Pennington under pressure throws incomplete. And they were in Randy Moss's lap that time. Once again, number 55. Just what we expected. Steve Dunlap, the defensive coordinator, said yesterday, we're going to come after it. We attack the football. Their thing is, we're going to get to Pennington before they have an opportunity to catch the ball. That's Bastien, who's all over him. He was, as I said, in his lap. 317 to play in the opening quarter. Ball just outside the two-yard line. It's got to be interference. I'll tell you what, Nate Terry held him up. They can maybe say uncatchable. It was intended for Moss, but he never got out there. They're jamming him as much as they can at the line of scrimmage. Nate Terry's trying to jam him at the line of scrimmage, doing a great job. The thing they like about Nate Terry, especially with Randy Moss, is his size. Terry's six foot two. He doesn't give away a lot of that height disadvantage a lot of these smaller corners will. Junior college transfer, went to Merced Junior College. I don't know whether Moss has just had the wind knocked out of him, trying to catch his breath, but he is on the sideline on third down. And about two. If they go back to the running game. Chapman looking, but there's no place to go. He is wrapped up, and once again, it's Gary Stills. Wow, what an impressive start for him. There's no substitute for speed. Look at the jump he got. Tight end has no chance. Chapman, where are you going to go? Well, you're not going to outrun him. Stills runs a 4-5. Big loss. Field goal unit on the field. This is Milasevic, number 49, is going to attempt the field goal. The spot at the 15. Make it a field goal up, and they get on the board. Marshall gets on the board. The 24-yard field goal makes it 14-3. Important, I think, an impressive drive that they did get something out of it. They would have liked to have put seven on the board, John, but anything they put up there, three points, meant a lot to this football team right now. Now the, the shift has to go back to the Marshall defense. They have to come out, stop this West Virginia offense. Yeah, they got some pretty girls up at Marshall, don't they? Yes, they do. The and defense, they are here. I guess it would be down in Marshall. Down at Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> it's the other direction. 14 to 3 is the score, but Marshall does get on the board. Well, to get inside the huddle of your favorite Big East team, go online at the official Big East Conference website. The internet address is www.bigeast.org for all of the football and conference news from around the Big East. Are you into all of that uh, internet business? You know what? I, uh, I'm one of those computer idiots. <laughs> all right, Don Nealon receiving a kickoff for the first time this afternoon. Keaton and Terry will be the deep men. Keaton is an interesting story, a guy who had meningitis last year, sat out, and of course, on came Amos Zaraway, so his role changed completely. He didn't know whether to stay or leave, but he has decided to stay. This will be Terry at the 15-yard line. 25, little room, 30. 35, fights his way out to the 36-yard line, kind of picked his way through traffic and did an excellent job. So good field position for the Mountaineers. 21-yard return, 10 plays, 72 yards, 3 minutes and 40 seconds. Milosevic with the field goal, 25 yards officially. There's the cool zone. That's where we need to be, John. I expect these guys need it worse than we do. I think so. A 21-yard return sets West Virginia up at the 36-yard line and the official stop time with 2.11 remaining in the opening quarter. West Virginia got on the board first with a blocked punt. And 
then the 80 yard touchdown drive capped by the 10 yard touchdown run of Amos Saraway who has 36 yards already. We'll check on Randy Moss who last time we saw him was down on his knees. Foreman is the motion man. Bolger waits and then dumps it out to Zaraway. He can't hang on. That might be a, they're going to call it an incomplete pass. Very close. Moss seems to be all right as he sets with his quarterback, Pennington. Looks like one of the assistant coaches are trying to get him some instruction as to how to get off the jam at the line of the scrimmage. And believe me, Randy Moss knows how to get off the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10, ball at the 36-yard line. Lone setback is Zaraway. Moss is all right. He'll be back when Marshall gets the football back. Winding down quarter number one. A little delay as Zaraway tries to get outside. Does at the 40. They bump him out of bounds. Finally, Beckett knocked him out of bounds. Zaraway moved it out beyond the 40 to near the 42-yard line, a gain of six. That's called making something out of nothing. A play that wasn't particularly blocked very well. Zaraway, Pukinas. The right guard trying to go up and lead this thing. You look like you've got him stopped here. Up, oh, John Grace fell for the move. Zaraway puts a little jiggle, and seven yards later, it's third down. And the way they blocked B.J. Cohen there almost was a clip. You can see Chapman and Zaraway. They have been the big threats offensively thus far. Straight drop. Bolger in some trouble wrapped up. Comes down inside the 35-yard line. All over him is B.J. Cohen, the senior from Conley, Georgia. He is Marshall's sack specialist, 32 career sacks, working against the left tackle, Solomon Page. We talked about Page earlier. Cohen is a lot like Gary Stills. Quick, fast, and he goes around the corner. Bolger does a good job holding on to that football. Brian Bauman will punt. Randy Moss is deep. First opportunity, here comes some pressure. Gets it off, a nice high floating kick. Moss kind of decoyed him a little bit. Now he's got a little room at the 25. Tries to cut back the other way. Spins away from one tackler. He covered a lot of ground. Schiller finally down to make the hit on him, but he did not pick up much yardage. It'll be at the 25-yard line. A 48-yard punch, seven yards on the return. John, you get the feeling Marshall's not at all intimidated by West Virginia. Sitting in here, gaining confidence with every series. Cohen sitting down, listening to the defensive staff. They've got to be much happier. Cohen last season, 63 tackles, 50 assisted, nine sacks, tied a team high. The 11th best defensive end in the country by Street and Smith. From the 24-yard line, the thundering herd. Pennington on the rollout, looking, throwing. That pass is caught outside the 40. It's grabbed by Wicks. Wicks goes down near the 45-yard line. And he was wide open that time. When you're having problem with protection, the thing that quarterbacks do, offensive coordinators, take the quarterback out of the pocket. Roll him out of the pocket run away from the pressure he does a good job throwing across his body wicks another guy like moss a lot of speed big gain for marshall steve lippy over to make the hit it's a 22 yard pickup for the thundering herd they've got it out beyond the 45 yard line pennington six of 11 66 yards and showing the calm cool collected style that he displayed in 1995 and leading his team to an ncaa division one championship game not much there for Chapman as he wiggles his way out to about the 47. Give him one. Marshall going in and out of offensive sets. That time, two wide receivers, two tight ends. Keep watching for this. When they have the two tight ends set in the game, look for a running play. West Virginia knows this also. It's second down and nine. 30 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Straight drop, pass is deflected, it's in the air and up for grabs, and West Virginia's got it. 
The Mountaineers have intercepted. It was deflected at the line of scrimmage. And coming away with it is Cogdell, I believe, number one. Pennington back in the pocket. If you can't get to the quarterback, jump and get your hands up. Jason Williams does that. Cogdell comes down with it. The danger there for West Virginia is there were too many guys around the ball. Too many guys. Are, it, that's when you fumble the ball. That's right. You drop it, don't catch it, it falls on the ground. Good job by Cogdell. First and ten near midfield. Again, Foreman in motion, but it's Zaraway. Tries to get away from one of his own, and he's in open field at the 30. Cuts it back at the 25. He could go. 10-5. Touchdown. Wow, what a run. Zaraway breaks it. There is a flag on the ground back at midfield. And let's hang on. It was a brilliant 51-yard run. Personal foul against Marshall. It's a touchdown. Amos Zaraway is worth the price of admission. What a cut. Gets away. Open field. The open field is just not fair. Well, Leroy White started it all, and he had to work his way past Solomon Page, number 77, uh, to go into his routine. There was some question to uh, Zaraway's health coming into this game. He hurt his thumb in the uh, early part of fall practice. Doesn't seem to be bothering him right now. He has 73 yards so far. Is that right? 93 yards. Okay. Foul uh, on the defense. It'll be a one-on-one half-yard penalty. It was accepted. We'll take it now. Touchdown is good. They do penalize them half the distance. So a little closer range for Jay Taylor. Taylor last year was perfect. 32 of 32 in point afters. The extra point is up and good. There are two seconds remaining, and let's go back once again. Watch the work that is done offensively here by White and also by Page. Solomon Page, but watch Leroy White, number 34. Zaraway sees the opening. Great backs have great vision. This guy can see the field. In the open field, you are not going to tackle Amos Zaraway. The race was on, but you knew that John Grace was not going to be able to catch Zaraway. And you have to like those uh, little yellow socks or whatever he has on. <laughs> Everything up here is blue and gold. That's right. Everything. 21 to 3, and we still have two seconds remaining in the first quarter, which means we will kick it off. Probably for the final play of the opening quarter. Some numbers on Amos Zaraway in 96. All he did was, first time he touched the ball, he went 59 yards for a touchdown. And he set the freshman rushing record here at West Virginia, 1,035 yards, the Big East Rookie of the Year. And as you say, played mo much of the last half of the season with a turf toe. And anybody that's played football and had a turf toe knows how painful that is, especially playing on an artificial surface. Ask Jack Lambert about turf toes. Ask me. <laughs> I've got one. Hoping to kick it deep. This is Wicks, and he will stay. So the ball will come out to the 20. That's it. We played the first quarter. All the excitement, the buildup, it's all gone West Virginia's way, starting with the blocked kick for a touchdown. The Mountaineers turn to the second quarter with a 21-3 lead over Marshall. The second quarter of this afternoon here in Morgantown. Amos Zaraway putting on quite a show this afternoon. He is... Doing the job for the Mountaineers. Offensive side of the ball, two touchdowns. Showing exactly why he's worth the price of admission. Exciting running back. And you know, I think, uh, Jeff, he's got deceptive speed. He can really turn it on when he wants to. He's got great initial quickness. 
And like you said, when he gets in front of people, nobody catches him. 93 yards, eight carries, and he has scored twice. Last year, nine touchdowns for Zaraway. Two so far in 1997. Marshall now. Chapman is the lone setback, and Pennington once again changing up at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete near the 24-yard line. Intended that time for Kolpa. It'll be second down and 10. I'll tell you, the Thundering Herd, the last time they had the ball, had a good march, good drive, moved it right down the field. You're talking about Mr. Offense for West Virginia, Amos Zaraway. Gary Steeles for the West Virginia defense has been all over the field. Interesting how Marshall is trying to block him. About half of the time, they're using a running back. Advantage West Virginia. I was going to say, I don't think that's going to work on a consistent basis, is it? Very talented football player. Second and 10 at the 20. Chad Pennington from Knoxville. Played as a freshman, did not play as a sophomore. That one is almost intercepted. Barrett Green got there, but could not put it away. And Barrett Green comes from a pretty good gene pool. His father, Joe, played at Bowling Green for who? Don Nealon. Almost picked this thing off. That time he had two defenders moving in front of Randy Moss. You know when you've been in coaching a long time, when you coach a former player and his son, Don Nealon. Well, 18 years here, and he also... Nine years at Bowling Green. He's been around for a while. Very successful at Bowling Green. Out of the shotgun on third down. There's the quick pass at the 20. Slamming him down. Not much that time for Chapman. He was knocked to the turf as he crossed the line of scrimmage and got about three. It'll be fourth down. Nate Terry with the tackle. John Thornton. You love to see your big defensive lineman running sideline to sideline. An excellent defensive stand that time for West Virginia. So Marshall will punt it. O'Neill has had one blocked. Nate Terry will be deep for the Mountaineers. The second kick for O'Neill was a 61-yarder that chased it all the way back to the end zone. Fair catch called for outside the 35 at the 37-yard line. That's where the Mountaineers will put it in play with 13.59 remaining first half. And we have a timeout with 13.59 to play. There is Terry. He called for and made the fair catch. That will give West Virginia the ball at the 37 when we come back to Morgantown. Working on the offensive line for the Thundering Herd. Not able to do much on that last possession. Trying to get their act together. Ball at the 37-yard line. John Wade is sporting a cool hat, isn't it? Yes, it is. We have some backup runners in there for West Virginia. Keaton carried the uh, football. Curtis in there for Amos Zaraway. There's Wade. There must be ice packs or something in that thing because it almost looks like one, one of those hats you put around your head, John, to go on a safari. Yeah, it does. Ball at the 40-yard line. A gain of a couple. No place to put anybody in this stadium. Capacity is 63,500 and more. Second and eight from the 40. The fake to Keaton. Down the middle of the pass is caught at the 35-yard line. Oswega made the catch and went down at the 35. The play action face fake, uh, fake that time by Bulger. Bulger sits in the pocket just as he releases the ball. Number six, Ricky Hall hits him. Asawega filling in for David Saunders. Tell me how your chest, tell me how your chest feels in the morning, Rich. There, ah. Ricky Hall, helmet, and, and helmet B. J. to chest. Cohen were right all over him, but the pass was completed down to the 35. 
It's first down and 10, and there is motion. In the backfield that time, you saw Mark Plants. This is going to be marked off against the Mountaineers. Um, excuse me, the Thunder uh, Hurt. Offsides with contact on the defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat the down. So it'll be first down and five. As a former center, I'm amazed at how defensive noses can never be offset. The ball is right in front of them. And I'm sure, you know, right now, Coach Pruitt is, is saying the same thing. 35 yards for Marshall, 42 for West Virginia. 30 of that came on one drive. But it's first and five for the Mountaineers. And the second team is in there. Keaton picks up about three, picking his way inside the 30 down to the 27. McLeod on the hit. Also, Andre O'Neill, number 55. It'll be second down and short yardage, second and a couple. You know, everybody talks about Coach Nealon and his conservative offense. I've been very impressed with the way they've ran their offense, very efficient. And this is not like the pros. They don't have preseason games to go out and wrink, get the wrinkles out of it. This is their first showing, looking very impressive. Looking right side and caught at the 20 yard line. Bang down is Foreman. But he made the catch before B.J. Summers could get to him. And Bolger looking sharp on this drive. Out of inside the 20 to 19. Pittsburgh Catholic High School, the same one, Dan Marino. He's got that quick release. Sean Foreman, a guy that will have to step up. Mentioned early, All-American candidate David Saunders out for the season with a torn ACL. Bolger now four for six, 60 yards passing in the first half. They've had that combination with Zaraway's running. Foreman in motion. Quick give to the fullback. Bouncing inside his plants. Playing without a hat as he got down to about the 10 yard line. Number 46, Mark Plants. Carry the ball. Plants on the quick hitter. They'll spot it at the 11. Mark Plants carries the football, but I'm going to tell DJ Cohen. Play football with your helmet on. <laughs> Look at his helmet. There it goes. There it goes. You know, the lucky thing, there's nobody's head inside of it, just the helmet. And the helmet almost made the tackle. Oh, good camera work, guys. Second down and two. That's Foreman in motion. Keaton cuts it outside. He could go, he will. Curtis Keaton for the touchdown. Led, led by Mark Plants, number 46. He did a great job leading through the hole. And you know what? With this West Virginia offense, Leroy White, Mark Plants, these guys are the ones going to, with, with the offensive line, this is the backup offensive line except for Steve Ford. Wow. Look at Plants. Mono a mano with Larry McLeod. Anthony Becht also with a great block to tight end downfield. Walk-in touchdown. It took him only six plays to go 62 yards and put another seven on the board. Scoreboard reads West Virginia 28 and Marshall 3. Take a look again. You could walk it in. He could have gone in backwards if he wanted to. We um, talked about Barry Sanders. John, I think you could have scored on this one. That touchdown makes it 28-3 Mountaineers. Ten fifty-one remaining in the opening half, and the Mountaineers lead 28-3. It is all West Virginia, as the scoreboard totals attest. The key is at the bottom, John. 172 yards for West Virginia University. Marshall, 86. And whoever said the statistics were for losers? Moss is 88. A little smaller next to him. That's Mark Wicks. One of them will be returning this kick, maybe. Jay Taylor's done a good job in handling the kickoff so far. And they're going to kick this one short. It'll be fielded at about the 17-yard line, and all of a sudden there's a lot of room for Moss. One man got him at the 35-yard line. I'll tell you what, they're doing the best they can, but as soon as he got it, it was almost like the seas parted. And you could see a conscious effort to try and kick the ball away from Moss. 
Great, great open field tackle by their kicker, Jay Taylor. Great block there by 35. Look at the size. This is like the parting of the Red Sea. Wicks coming up through the hole, gets a block on plants. You talk about your kicker being a football player and improved special teams play by West Virginia, you just saw it. 48 yards on the kick return, sets the thundering herd up at the 35-yard line of West Virginia. Marshall trying to come right back, and they go to the ground game. Strong hit inside. The last man in was Green. Number 33, putting the stick to Doug Chapman. Got down to the 31-yard line, a gain of four. You talk to the West Virginia coaching staff, Steve Dunlap, the defensive coordinator. A lot of concern about that West Virginia secondary. Very young. Perlow Bastine, the only returning starter. West Virginia University for a long time have been known for great hitters in the secondary. Clock running to the 10-minute mark. Time remaining in the first half. Pennington in the end zone incomplete. And Moss drew double coverage again. That was Nate Terry back there on the coverage. Also, Gary Tompkins, number 11 down defensively for West Virginia. It'll be second down. Or excuse me, third down. And about six. Ball just inside the 31-yard line. Marshall just one of five, and you can see once again Pennington. He's done this all afternoon. He's been changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Quick pass is incomplete. It was intended for Colclaw. Once again, Stills. You see Hadley as well. Hadley, a junior college transfer. West Virginia does a terrific job of recruiting out of the state of Florida, which is amazing considering you've got to compete with the Florida schools. And the last I checked that Miami, Florida State, and Florida, they had pretty good football players. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Fourth down. And trailing 28-3, to three, the thundering herd will go for it. Now Pennington will run up the middle. Diving for the first down. Let's see if he got there. It's going to be close. Cogdo made the tackle. It all depends on the spot of the football. I'm going to go out on the limb, John. I think he came up short. Okay. He did. He didn't even bring out the change. Mountaineer defense holds, turns the ball back to the offense. For one of the few times this afternoon, Pennington had time to throw the football. No one to throw it to. He sticks his shoulder down, try and dive for that first down marker. Talking about an All-American. How about Henry Slay? Takes Gillums back to the quarterback, still chasing him down. Never stops. You know, it's amazing. Great players always have great motors. They always try and seem to get to the ball. We're in the second quarter. Second quarter, Justin away. Play fake to Zaraway. They run the screen back the other way. This is White. He's knocked out of bounds as he gets across the 35. Maybe enough for a first down. You know, West Virginia has a tradition on Fridays in the walkthrough that Coach Nealon runs a play. He ran one similar to this and threw a touchdown. It almost worked equally as well for Bolger. You're talking about a man. Leroy White, he was out here yesterday in shorts and a t-shirt. This guy's put together. 6'1", 230 pounds from Washington, D.C., but you also told me the players like it when Don Nealon scores, don't yeah, they? Yeah, if they do not score, they stay out there much longer. White in front of Zaraway. This is the play fake to Zaraway. Bolger on the run, throws, and it's almost intercepted. Almost picked off by B.J. Summers. Intended for number 80, Ozzie Gata. Number eight. And that offense for Marshall going back to work. It was three and out after a 48-yard kickoff return. If I'm the offensive coaches, I'm going to try and find a way to put a helmet on number 55. Well, that may be part of the problem, <laughs> finding a way to do that. Finding someone to put a helmet on Gary Stills. First and 10 from the 38. 
9.31 remaining in the opening half. 28 to 3, the Mountaineers lead. Here comes Zaraway, bounces outside, stops, stutters, steps around inside, outside the 40 to the 41-yard line before he's dropped by B.J. Summers. One of the most exciting three-yard gains you've seen <laughs> in a long time. You're right. This guy is exciting. Zaraway comes off now. Foreman checks back in, the extra wide receiver on third down and seven. Ball at the 41-yard line. Mountaineers have looked sharp so far. You wouldn't know this was the first game of the season. The opening drive was sputtering both ways for both teams, and then the West Virginia defense had some penalties in the long drive by the Thundering Herd. There's White, hit from behind, and down he goes short of the first down. Once again, it was Summers coming over, and the Mountaineers will have to punt. Clock runs with eight and a half minutes to play. Let's check out White. When you run a little play action, you're going to run a screen. The running back and the lineman have to be great actors. John Grace, if you are one of the Thundering Herd fans, this guy has delivered some hits today. Mountaineers came up short, fourth down, and are forced to punt. That is Moss standing back at his own 10-yard line. Brian Bauman with his second punt of the afternoon. Snap is good. The kick, though, is off the side of the foot. And it wiggles out of bounds. Another chance for Marshall here. That punt went, what, five yards? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not what Brian had in mind. Yeah, that, that's, what, that's what Brian Ballman is going to try and forget. Ball will be spotted at the 48-yard line. We will take a break with 7.57 remaining in the first half. West Virginia leading Marshall. The battle for the state of West Virginia, 28-3. to three. We're having a little statewide West Virginia party outdoors here at Mountaineer Field this afternoon, along with Jeff Bostick. I'm John Sanders. Happy you could join us, and I don't think you want to go cheering too soon here. Uh, there's still a lot of time left in this football game. You know, Marshall puts a score up right here. It's 28-10. This game is long from over. This is a team that throws the ball a lot, and as long as you're throwing the ball and you got a guy like Randy Moss on your team, it's never over. Pennington only two for his last nine. It's 28-3 West Virginia. And they'll go to the ground game, battling for a couple of yards up the middle is Doug Chapman. He'll get to midfield. It'll be second down and eight. Of course, Randy Moss is certainly a marked man, and he will be every game he plays this season. Last season, he had at least one touchdown receiving in the first quarter of nine consecutive games. Not today. Just a field goal for the Thundering Herd. We are midway through quarter number two at Mountaineer Field on a bright, sunny afternoon so far. Again, it's Chapman, and he is crunched at the line of scrimmage. Cogdell in there, number one to lead the charge with help from John Hadley. Don't be surprised by the performance of this uh, West Virginia University defense. Last season, number one in the nation, giving up 217 yards a game. You want to know what it feels like to be a running back? Hello, Mr. Chapman. My name is Damon Cogdale. Welcome to West Virginia. Out of Chaffee Junior College in Miami, Florida. Pennington rolling, throwing. The pass is caught down the sideline. Picked up that time. That's Long, Gerald Long, the former Mountaineer who made the catch, and that's a big third down play to dig him out of third and long and pick up the first at the 27. This is the toughest throw for a quarterback. A right-handed quarterback rolling to his left, throwing across his body. Are you talking about threading the needle? Great job by Pennington. I'm sure Barrett Green thought, hey, I'm going to get an interception out of this thing, and it went right by him. Big pickup of 23 yards on that play. Moves it down to the 27-yard line. First and 10 for the Thundering Herd. Chapman trying to get outside, and he will not be able to do it. Green coming up to make the hit. Lippy there as well. No 
Trying to run the ball with Chapman, Steve Lippy. You talk to the defensive coaches, you're talking about a tough individual, a guy that works in the weight room during the offseason. He personifies what Coach Don Nealon wants in a West Virginia football player. He's out of Uniontown, Ohio. Out of the shotgun, Pennington under pressure, and down he goes. Slammed to the turf that time by your man, Gary Stills. We talked about him early in the game. I think he has lived up to billing. A rush linebacker. He has been all over the field. Pennington has no chance. Gary Stills records his second sack of the first half. Slammed him down at the 33, the loss of six. It'll be third down and 16. And you know, some guys just love to play football. I think this guy would play out in the parking lot. He doesn't care. Just think, play football. You think he's having a little fun this afternoon? He's loving it right now. Out of the gun again. And this one's going to be whistled dead. Four minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the opening half. A half that has been dominated by West Virginia. Timeout is called by the thundering herd. So Marshall will take its first timeout of the afternoon. Pennington will come over and talk with the offensive coordinator. Try to get something going for Marshall. Down 28 to 3 here in Morgantown. 28 to 3 is the score. It's been all Mountaineers so far in the first half with 449 remaining to be played. What a first half defensively for Gary Stills of Trenton, New Jersey. Been all over the field. He is the recipient of the Jeff Hotstutler Endowment Scholarship. Pretty good quarterback here. And the son-in-law of Don Nealon. Down the middle, pass is caught. Spinning inside the 15 and spun down is Levon Kolkov. The junior picks up the first down. And this drive continues at the 15-yard line. This Marshall team may be behind 28 to 3, but you can certainly sense they are not intimidated by West Virginia. They are not fearful. Pennington is sitting in the pocket. And right now they're making plays. Trying to get into the end zone before halftime. Another sack. Guess who? Yes, sir. It's Gary Stills. Boy, he is quick. He reminds me of a guy that used to play at the University of North Carolina, and he went on to play for the New York Giants. He wore a, a number slightly larger, number 56. His name was Lawrence Taylor. Could play a little, huh? He could play some football, believe me. Nine-yard loss on the sack of Pennington. Clock running with 3.45 to play in the half. Pennington looking, looking. Gets it off. It's knocked down. Cogdell uh, climbing the ladder, and behind him, Mark Wicks looked to be open, but Cogdell did not let it get through. And once again, Pennington was swarmed under just as he threw the football. Whether it's Division I AA, Division I, pro football high school, irregardless, there's not anybody that plays a quarterback position that likes sitting in the pocket and getting hit every time he throws the football. If you give a quarterback time, it's amazing how much his completion percentage goes up. Down the middle again. This one is caught in the end zone for a touchdown. That is Colclaw who made the catch. So Pennington did not quit. Marshall is on the board with 334 remaining in a half. And this is a huge touchdown for the herd. There is no quit in this Marshall team. Pennington, perfect throw. Cole Claw, he knows he's going to get hit. Great job extending his arms. You think Pennington's still into this game? Yes, he is. Well, remember, he threw 15 touchdowns two years ago and taking his team all the way to the championship game and only five interceptions. The extra point is up, and it is good. The 52-yard, nine-play scoring drive took four minutes and 23 seconds, and it cuts the Mountaineer lead to 28-10. to 10. With this much time remaining, just over three and a half, 
I think the next drive is going to be very important for the Thundering Herd to make sure that they can keep West Virginia contained. Maybe get one more crack at it, but at the very least, take it in the way it is right now. Yeah, they would be very happy to leave right now, 28 to 10. And you look how West Virginia has scored. A block punt for a touchdown. That's an easy score. That's a gift. Second one, the big run by Zeraway. 51 yards. You take those two plays away, you've got a 14 to 10 game. And we might have a, a little bit of uh, tenseness in the stands of all these 70,000 people here. Another plus for the Marshall University. That last drive, they had a lot of third and long situations, and Pennington stood tough and delivered. They converted the third and 15, and they converted the third and 16. There's a little kid chewing some gum, isn't it? I think so. Is he they're, nervous? They're thinking one day I might be a Mountaineer. Keaton and Terry are deep. That's uh, Keaton on the far side and Terry on the near side. The kickoff bounces to Keaton. Looking for some room at the 20. 25, cuts it back outside, gets a block. Swarmed under, close to midfield. An excellent return that time by Keaton. Look how he was so patient. He waited for his spots and just kind of weaved his way upfield. And you know the coaching staff yesterday, Coach Nealon and all his assistants, kept speaking to us to the fact we have spent a great deal of time working on our special teams. We realized it cost us a couple games last year, specifically the Miami and Syracuse. And you know what? You can see that paying off today. A couple big kickoff returns, a block punt for a touchdown. That was a 38-yard return. Sets it up for the Mountaineers at the 47-yard line. First and 10. Foreman in motion. It's Keaton to midfield. He'll pick up about three. In West Virginia, I'm sure, in the last three minutes here would be content to pound it out on the ground if they can. Eat up some clock. Nine plays, 52 yards for the Thundering Herd. The touchdown pass of 24 yards to Colclaw. It's the first touchdown of the 1997 season for the defending Division I AA National Champions. How about their head coach? Comes out of an assistance job at Florida. Bob Pruitt, all he does is go 15-0 and 0 in his very first season as a head coach. He does something that no coach on any Division I AA Division 1A has ever done. Come out his first year and run the table. He's also been an assistant at Tulane, Mississippi, Wake Forest. He was the defensive coordinator for Florida and a graduate of Marshall, where he played halfback, was drafted by the Cowboys, and then wound up playing some semi-pro football. He was telling us yesterday, and we were talking about people with speed. Obviously, he's got one, Randy Moss. Uh, I played with a couple guys that were Blazers. Daryl Green, unbelievable. When he was a rookie with the Cowboys, he played with a guy that was fairly fast. Bob Hayes. Bullet Bob Hayes. Just came back from winning the 1964 Olympic gold medal in the 100-yard dash. And I asked Coach Pruitt, could you catch him? He goes, no, no way. <laughs> he was as fast as uh, Bill. Matched up against one of the deans of college coaching, Don Nealon, 18 years here, nine years at Bowling Green. Where's Randy Moss back in there someplace? And the offense is sitting, hoping the defense can do the job in the final 239, and we're going to stop the clock. Now we're ready. Second down and seven from midfield. Play action pass is caught for just about a 10 yard gain. Foreman made the catch in the arms of B.J. Summers. A lot of credit has to go out to this offensive line for West Virginia doing a great job blocking for Zeraway. They're also doing a number keeping the pocket nice and open for Bolger. He drops back. Nobody's in his face. We talked about that quick release. 
Also spoke of Sean uh, Foreman having to step up with Saunders being out for the year, and he has done that. They get eight yards and the first down. It's first and ten from the 42-yard line, and Bulger looking very efficient in the first half. Play action fake, sets, waits, and goes down. Back at the 47, 48-yard line, he is wrestled under. Toviesi made the tackle, number 85 coming in to get him. Talked to some of the coaches yesterday, and they're not surprised about this guy. Six foot seven, 244 pound, true freshman. Tovesi from Alexandria, Virginia, makes the sack back at the 47 yard line. It'll be second down and 15 for the Mountaineers as the clock winds down, a minute 35 to play. We're in the first half. Keaton hit immediately as he moved through by B.J. Cohen. Cohen got some help from Andre O'Neill, but Cohen is the man. Even though they're down 28-10, this Marshall team is playing hard. If you're Bob Pruitt, that's exactly what you want from your football team. Staying in the game. B.J. Cohen with a little trick we used to call a T.E. tackle end exchange. Bring in a couple of extra wideouts now. Green is in there for the first time this afternoon. One wideout left, two wideouts, two, one, one to the right and two to the left in this formation. Out of the shotgun. Bulger sets, throws. It's deflected and incomplete. It was intended over there for Green. Well, Tovesi got a piece of it, I think. With 44 seconds left, Marshall will get one more chance. Do you come after the punter, or do you give your your All-American Randy Moss an opportunity to return this ball? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it would be a great time to come after the punter. It looks like they're uh, up and ready to go. Remember, the last punt was only six yards. Now, whistles everywhere, so bring this one back. The punt was much better. Heads for the corner. That would have been a beauty, huh? But it hadn't been fielded. But. Illegal motion. So they will have to back it up five yards and kick it again with 40 seconds remaining in the half. A dead, dead ball. Flush start. start. On the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Still down. Move it back to the 45, and Bauman will try it again. Awaiting the kick is Moss. This is another good one. Moss signals fair catch and takes it at the 13. Brian feels better about that one than the last one. 42 yard kick for people that have never tried to field a punt by a college punter or a pro punter you don't realize how hard it is to sit back there number one and catch the ball and realize that there are 10 people running at you trying to take your head off yeah. and running as hard as they can exactly right? first down 10 for Marshall with 32 seconds remaining Moscow's wide left Gerald Long is wide right. And they're going to kneel down, as we said. They'll be happy to get back in this football game, trailing by 18 at halftime. And Bob Pruitt and company can go in that locker room and regroup. They had a couple of good drives during the course of the half. The last one very impressive because of those third and long situations. Converted two third and longs. Kept the drive alive. Pennington, every bit as poised as Bulger. Both of these coaches have to be very happy with the player, the quarterbacks. And I'm sure when Bob Pruitt goes in there, he was concerned about how his defense would hold up against West Virginia's offensive line. Better as the half went on. Don Nealon will head to his locker room with the halftime lead. West Virginia is in front of Marshall in their first meeting since 1923. It's 28 to 10. We will begin our halftime activities after this. 
Welcome back to Morgantown, West Virginia, where the Mountaineers lead the Thundering Herd 28 to 10 at halftime. Happy you could join us this afternoon for our coverage of the opening game of 1997 for these two teams. I'm John Sanders along with Jeff Bostic. Let's talk about the first 30 minutes of play. Some big plays in that opening half for the Mountaineers. Big plays. It started early. A block punt. West Virginia scoops it up, scores. Second series. Famous Amos Zaraway breaks a 51-yard run. On offense, it's been Zaraway. On defense, Gary Stills has been all over the field. But for the people for Marshall, they're certainly not out of it. That was a huge drive for them at the end of the half to get back in this football game. They had a couple of third and longs. They converted them, and they got the touchdown. Their quarterback, Chad Pennington, has been very poised in the pocket. He has been hit early and often. He's sitting in there. He's showing his true grit. His wide receivers, LaVorne Colclaw, comes up with a great touchdown catch. And obviously, the All-American Randy Moss, he's contributed, whether it be receiving, whether it be kick returning, punt returning, whatever it is, he's been all over the field also. Let's take you inside the locker room and talk now about what Rob Pruitt is going to say to his club. They struggled a little bit early on in the ball game, and West Virginia did a good job. They followed Moss every place. They were in his lap during the first half. What does he say at halftime? Bob Pruitt's going to tell his team, you know what? We gave up two big plays, the block punt, the 51-yard run. Take those off the board. We have a 14-10 to 10 game playing in their backyard. Second half, we're going to come out. West Virginia has the ball first. Defense, you have to stop them. Offense, we have to continue doing what we've been doing, being patient, being poised. We have to find a way to put a, a hat on number 55, though. I'll tell you what else has happened, because West Virginia jumped out to the big lead. That in itself has maybe taken the crowd out of it a little bit. They kind of sat back and said, oh, well, it's 28 to 3. We can relax a little bit. So it hasn't been as intense as it was, say, in the first 15 minutes. And it'll be amazing to see what happens if Marshall can come out and stop West Virginia's offense, go and put a score up on the board, 28-17. This crowd will be uh, a little bit more tense sitting in these stands. Yeah, we'll wake them up for sure. We're glad you joined us this afternoon. It is a halftime, and we will be back with our halftime feature as we continue our coverage of Marshall and West Virginia from Morgantown. It's halftime in Morgantown, West Virginia. The game the state has been waiting for for 74 years is here, and West Virginia leads it 28 to 10. One of the All-Americans returning on this outstanding defense is Henry Slay for the Mountaineers. We're going to take a closer look at this fine young defensive lineman. Speed, size, quickness. This is Henry Slay. I've always been an elder, um, elder person of the defensive line since my sophomore year. And I, I always consider myself a leader. And, and this year, I just want to step it up and make a, a little bit you know, more uh, big plays and, and just to be an active player. Well, I think everybody can stick out maybe one, you know, maybe one or two, three, four plays in the game. But I think it takes a, a top-notch athlete, a top-notch football player to make his presence felt every, every play. It's not always making a tackle or a sack. It's just being very disruptive and, and just, just always being in the opponent's game plans. And I'm looking forward to, to uh, playing this season. I know I have a lot of you know, big expectations, and this team has a lot of big expectations, and I think that's going to help us strive to be the best. The preseason Big East Defensive Player of the Year anchors a defensive line that Don Nealon thinks could be one of the best ever at West Virginia. I think those are like the three best athletes on the team. I think they, they combine size, strength, and, and speed and intelligence. And I know they're not going to be able to cater their game plan against me. And we got a lot of great athletes on the line and, and behind, you know, the starters. Well, this is the first summer that, you know, I spent the entire summer down here. It was kind of hard, you know, because I'm real close to my family and I wasn't able to spend a lot of time with them this summer. But, you know, I just, I just try to make that dedication and that commitment to the team and to stay out here the whole summer. I think everybody's made that commitment. You know, this is the year that, that I've seen the most people down here the entire summer. You know, I, can, I can't remember one starter not being here. And I think everybody's made that commitment, and I think it's going to show throughout the season. Slay's ferocity on the field is a reflection of his position coach. Set! Mo! 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 Set! Come on, Henry. Come on, Hank. Come on, Hank. 
Bill Kerlavich expects excellence from his defensive line, and he's getting it from Slay. He works tremendously hard, tremendously hard. And uh, he's another guy. There's nothing that you could ask him to do that he wouldn't do or die trying. He, he expects a lot out of us, and I think that that's, that's gotten us to the point we are right now. And um, he, he expects excellence, and if anything less, you know, he's not going to accept it. I'm just trying to play every every play, you know, to my fullest potential. You know, last year I got, you know, involved in maybe, you know, stats and worry about that. But this is my year to make the plays, and the plays need to be made, and I'm going to make them. Henry Slay, not only an outstanding football player, he does very well in the classroom as well. He's a member of the athletic directors all academic list at West Virginia. Right now, the pride of West Virginia, the Mountaineer Marching Band, is on the field. We'll check out some of that when we come back with more. It's Marshall, West Virginia. The Mountaineers have the lead. It's 28 to 10 at halftime. We welcome you back to Mountaineer Field. I'm John Sanders along with Jeff Bostic, and what we're going to do right now, Jeff, is take a look at some of those big plays that you talked about. The opening drive, fourth down play, and a blocked punt. Tompkins did it all. Gary Tompkins, he blocks the punt, sees it laying on the ground, gets up immediately, scoops the ball up, scores the fourth touchdown for West Virginia University in the 1997 season. And a thing that's pointed on both ends is not supposed to bounce so nicely, but it did for him, didn't it? Exactly, and, and really this got the crowd into the game. And you're talking about keeping the crowd into the game. Amos Zaraway has had a great first half. Well, you may have been worried about his turf toe last year. His legs seem to certainly be operating fine right now. 10-yard touchdown run. And nothing wrong with his hand. That capped an 80-yard touchdown march. And watch this one from 51 yards away. Gets a great block by Leroy White. That's a pancake block. Takes the defender back on his back. If you give Sarah away an open field, it's over. 51 yards later, West Virginia scores again. That made it 21 to three, and then his backup, Curtis Keaton, got in the action. You talk about blocking, look at this hole. Another big hole, and it starts with the fullback. Mark Plant, Plant's a great block. You know what, Keaton walks into the end zone. Most of the fans here at the point thought, well, this game's over. You know, they're not, they're not quitting, they're not going away. I've been very impressed with Pennington. He has been hit early and often. Great throw, cold claw, great extension, touchdown. They only go in at half, 28-10 down. And you know what, we're gonna see, we're gonna see a team that's got a lot of heart come back out here. Important first series. If Marshall can stop the West Virginia offense, get control of the ball, put a score on the board, we still got a game. But on the other hand, if the Mountaineers come out and maybe hammer that football down the field, it could be bad news for Marshall. We'll be having more stats coming up later, but right now we're going to go down to the field where the two bands, Marshall University and West Virginia, West Virginia University, have joined forces for a halftime show, and let's listen in.
time is winding down. We're getting ready for the second half of play. West Virginia leading Marshall 28 to 10. We will be back with more West Virginia football after this. Teams are back on the field, and we're about set to start the second half of play. I'm John Sanders, along with Jeff Bostick. Very happy you could join us for the biggest game in the state of West Virginia this year. And let's take a look at our Kroger halftime stats. It's 28 to 10 on the scoreboard, and here are the other numbers breaking down this way. I think the one that really stands out, John, look at Marshall under rushing yards. 13 yards rushing. 10 first downs each. Both teams were sloppy early, but, but played much better as the game went on. Well, that total offense number was a lot more lopsided when we checked it out earlier, you recall. So a good job by the Thundering Herd late in that half to close the gap. They have closed the gap, and I think when they closed that gap in yardage, it also brought their confidence back. Getting ready for the second half of play as Perlo Bastine gets loosened up or re-loosened up. A lot of Heisman hype about two guys who are on this field this afternoon. Zaraway certainly has lived up to his preseason hoopla. Moss, they've been all over him. Well, they've been all over him, but he's made his presence felt. Returning kicks. Uh, they've been doing a great job jamming him at the line of scrimmage. Nate Terry, the big defensive back that transferred from Merced Junior College, six foot two, 200 pounds, has done a great job keeping him off the ball. This guy has been very impressive. And he is set to come on the field because West Virginia will be receiving the opening kick. There is Moss. Keaton and Terry deep. And the second half is underway from Morgantown. We're at Mountaineer Field. Keaton drops it, picks it up at the two. Runs away from a couple of tacklers and still on his feet. Fights his way out across the 15. And that was a pretty good job just to get to there. We talked about it earlier, receiving punts. How about a kickoff from a sidewinder? Has a little curve on it. Keaton has a problem handling it. The only thing I know to be true, John, is when you're running east and west, you're not gaining yards. He did get it out to the 16-yard line, and that's where the Mountaineers will put it in play as we begin the second half, 28 to 10, West Virginia. Quick pass. It's dropped by Foreman right at the 20-yard line. So instead of going to the running game, Bulger dropped back quickly, tried to put it in the hands of Sean Foreman. It'll be second down. Second down and 10. Just underway in the second half. As the quarterback comparison, it was a strong performance by Bulger in that first half. Pennington came on strong at the end of the first half. A little bit of difference in the protection both of those were receiving, though. Zaraway stops and down he goes near the 15-yard line. No hold that time. O'Neill was there. And there are flags down. That's the key to stopping a running back is making him run to the sideline. A couple of different instances during this game, Zaraway has been able to get around the corner. This time, Marshall strung it out. Marshall's defense has played very well the last three series. And you can see each series they come on the field, they're gaining more and more confidence in this is West Virginia offense. See if they decide to take that holding call. Holding. On the offense. That'll be declined. Third down. They lost a couple of yards on the play, so they will decline the penalty. The holding call is decline it is third and long out of the shotgun now they have taken Zaraway out of there white is the lone running back he's in there to block and now maybe come out on a pass play pass is complete near the 25 yard line Osqueda made the catch right at the 25 I think he's going to be a little short Larry Moore was there defensively for the thundering herd and so it's three and out for the Mountaineers this is exactly what Bob Pruitt and that Marshall defense wanted to do. Three plays and out. West Virginia punts the ball. Marshall takes over, and guess who's back to return this punt? Wouldn't be number 88, would it? 
It certainly would. The only player I've ever known to have his own website. www.randymoss.com. That's how you can get in contact with him. Almond's kick. Fielded at the draw, dropped at the 25. He retreats to pick it up. Now he's trying to dig himself out of a hole and will. Plenty of room down that left sideline. Stop and go move at the 45. Inside the 40, inside the 35, and down he goes. Chris Edmonds finally tracked him down. And maybe that bobble helped him a little bit. And this is the first time that many people have had a chance to see Randy Moss in person. Obviously playing Division I AA. You don't get on television very often. This guy is everything that he's been built. Six foot five, 215 pounds, can do it all. Has a problem handling this ball. You talked about that thing bouncing up. Just eludes a shoestring tackle. Picks up some blocking. Guess who kept this from going to the house? Gary Stills. First down at the 33 following a 42-yard punt return of a 50-yard kick. Pennington looks. It's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. He's second and ten. Good job by the senior Bob Baum. If you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up, and that's exactly what he did. It will be second down and ten. The Thundering Herd got what they wanted, Jeff. They got the three and out, and they got good field position. Let's see if they can take advantage of it and get right back in this football game. Three wide receivers split to the near side. There's the quick pass. At the 30 to 25, Cole Claw dancing down the sidelines. He's banged out of bounds. They're going to spot it near the 15-yard line. Gary Tompkins came up to make the hit, but they flooded that zone, made good yardage, and get the first down. And Tompkins is lucky he wasn't flagged. The two things they do, they try and protect the quarterback as much as they can, and they also do not like people getting hit near the sideline. Call Cloak. Close to the sideline. Tompkins is coming up out of the secondary. You tell me, is he out of bounds? Very close. I think we have a player down over there on the far side. Is that Cole Claw who is down? It that, is. That is Cole Claw that's down. Maybe it's a cramp, though. It looks. We'll take a break with 13 13 remaining third quarter. Marshall trying to get back in the game, trailing by 18. The Mountaineers have the lead. Today's game is brought to you by Kroger. Kick off your next tailgate party with Kroger, your total value leader. By the West Virginia Lottery, providing funds for education, senior citizens, and tourism. When you play, everybody wins. By Bell Atlantic, the heart of communication. By Caterpillar Equipment and Walker Machinery, continuing a tradition of excellence since 1953. And by Huntington Bank, take control of your money. Well, they are jumping for joy on the Marshall side of the field because their man, Randy Moss, is pulling them back in this football game. First, it was the kickoff return, and then from the 15-yard line, he went airborne. Pennington found him, and it's six for the herd. You talk about a quick strike offense. They scored before we came back. Nate Terry is all over him. That's one of the advantages of having a wide receiver that's six foot five. Now it's 28 to 17. And exactly what Jeff Bostick talked about at halftime has happened. Bob Pruitt's club is back in at 1308 remaining in the third, 28-17, West Virginia. Marshall has scored the last 14 points, and Moss gets his first touchdown catch of 1997. You take a look from the end zone. The we good talk. news is he scored the touchdown, John, but if he wants to duplicate 1996, he's got to score 28 more. Short kickoff fielded downfield by one of the up men at the 22-yard line, and that's where West Virginia now will go back to work. The Thundering Herd is back in the football game. Ryan Brady received the kick. He spotted at the 22, first and 10, and it was three and out. That's so. one of the disadvantages, John, of going up big early in the game. Some of that emotion and some of that adrenaline that you had going in, it, it turns off. And once you lose it, it's hard to turn it back on. Well, let's see if Bulger can get the Mountaineers going now. Zaraway trying to get outside. He'll squeeze ahead for a couple of yards, no more. You can see the defense, Ricky Hall. 
a former fullback makes the tackle. They moved him over to the defensive line. Former fullback out of College Park, Georgia. How often do you hear a converted fullback playing nose guard? No, maybe linebacker, but not nose guard, huh? The Marshall defense is excited. Second down. They only gave him one yard on the play. It'll be second down and nine. Play fake from Bolger. Now runs away from pressure. He's going to keep it and go out of bounds as he gets across the 25 to the 27-yard line. It'll be third and five. Smart play by Larry Moore, the cornerback for the Marshall defense. Bolger's running out of bounds. He had a chance to hit him. Chose not to. Probably prevented his team from getting a penalty. Bolger getting the instructions from the sidelines. This is a big third down for this West Virginia offense. They have struggled the last three times they've been on the field. David Richardson is in that lineup now, and the Marshall players trying to get their fans into it on third down and five. Richardson is the motion man. The pass is caught across the 35. Richardson drops the football. Was he down before? Yes, he was down. I think it's going to be short of a first down, though, depending on the spot. They needed to get close to the 33, and I think they only got to the 32. It'll be fourth down. Just from the, the, the top of this stadium here at Mountaineer Stadium, this looked like a fumble to me. We'll see from this replay. Good job of stripping the ball. No knee down yet, and that ball's out. It's a little bit congested in there, huh? West that last look, it did appear that he was down, and they are going to kick it away. That means more work for Randy Moss and Brian Bauman now, standing back inside his own 20. This one angled toward the sideline, fielded back at the 16, spinning his way across the 20 to the 22 is Randy Moss. A 53-yard kick by Brian Bauman. Very little return by Randy Moss. But the good news for the Thundering Herd, they've got the football back at the 22. Coming right into your living room. Is this a fumble? I think the ball is out before his knee hits the ground. West Virginia fortunate. Marshall was on the ball. The officials may have blown that one. 22-yard line, first down 10. Moss is split to the near side. Going with the lone setback. It's been Doug Chapman most of the day, and he will stumble as he gets to the line of scrimmage and goes down. And once again, you see Stills was one of the first one to the hole. Randy Moss, of course, was only the player of the year in basketball in the state of West Virginia twice. In his senior year, he was both player of the year in football and basketball. You know more about him. He's an excellent runner. Well, when you get a uh, comment, he was the best high school football player I've ever seen from Lou Holtz. As good as Deion Sanders. Deion is a measuring stick. This kid's just as, just as big or bigger than Deion. Uh, that's from Bobby Bowden. Uh, those are some uh, very high... We have a timeout with 11.21 to go third quarter. It's now a 28-17 lead for West Virginia over the Thundering Herd. 28-17 is the score. It is second down and 10 for the Thundering Herd back at about the 21-yard line. Still plenty of time left in this football game, 11.21 to go. And during that timeout, the West Virginia players trying to get their fans back in the ball game. And I think part of uh, getting them out of the game was that early big lead that they had, 28 to 3. But now it's 28 17. There is the quick pass. Moss is dumped at the 24. Hadley made the play over there defensively. Moss gets a couple. You talk about, you know, Randy Moss and what kind of athlete is he? During the spring, he competed in the indoor track competition. It had colleges from all over the country. Ohio, right here in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia. He won the 100 meters. He won the 200 meters. And later that day, he went out and pitched a two-hitter and hit a home run for their baseball team. Wow. 
he can do it all. Here they come. Gets the pass off incomplete out to the 37-yard line before they can wrap him up and knock him down. But the thundering herd beginning to move. That is a first down play. You know this is a big game for Gerald Long. He was here two years ago as a wide receiver, was the starting receiver for West Virginia on opening day 1995. And you know ever since this game's been scheduled, he has had this thing pinned up on his locker, looking forward to it. He makes the first down grab out across the 35 to the 37-yard line. There are plenty of folks here in green and white, and they have something to cheer about now because the thundering herd is climbing right back in this football game. Pass is complete. Again, it's Moss. Moss gets across the 45 to the 47, close to another Marshall first down. I tell you, he's not afraid to stick his head in there and run those crossing patterns. It's big a first guy, down. A big guy that's very physical. That was not an easy catch. He's coming across the middle. He knows he's going to get hit. We talked about the yardage earlier. West Virginia now with 213. The thundering herd with 205. And they are thundering right now. 952 to play third quarter. And Marshall is on the move. Pennington changes the play at the line of scrimming. He's got two wide receivers out to the left side, and he goes to the running back who breaks it down the near side. 30, 25, 15, 10. Touchdown, Marshall. Breaking the play all the way was Turner. And just like that, Marshall is back in the football game. 53-yard touchdown sprint by Turner. He's the backup to Chapman, a sophomore from Manassas, Virginia. The extra point to follow. So the trend of big plays continues, only it's the thundering herd. And I think some of the people who have gone out to the parking lot might want to get back to their seats. This one is a 28-24 game. Milosevic getting his fans fired up as he knocks through the extra point. Marshall is right back in it. Great job by Turner getting upfield, running north and south. He breaks an arm tackle, and it's over. This Marshall offense has played well all afternoon. Now they're not turning the football over. They're not committing the penalty, and they're moving the ball against last year's number one ranked defense in the nation. This is a great move right there for Turner, and then he gets out of the tackle of Topkins right through his arms, and you know that Steve Lippy's not going to be able to catch him from behind. There are a lot of West Virginia fans right now sitting on their hands. And in the corner of Mountaineer Stadium is about where all of the Thundering Herd fans are. They're standing up, shaking those green pom-poms. It's 28-24. At one time, it was 28-3, but this 53-yard run has the Thundering Herd thundering in Morgantown. It'll be Keaton and Terry deep for West Virginia. And let's see if the Mountaineers can stem this momentum that has certainly shifted to the thundering herd. It'll be Terry at the 13-yard line. He's got a little bit of a seam at the 30, spun down as he gets to the 35-yard line. And that seam closed in a hurry. Tackle was made by Jimmy Parker. A backup linebacker. So at the 35-yard line, let's see what West Virginia can do. They've been three and out in their first two series in this half. And this has been a front yard brawl, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Just as build. Wouldn't you like to see this rivalry? Wouldn't you like to see this rivalry continue? I think a lot of people would, but there's no room on the schedule into the year 2004. Bolger under some pressure. Dumps it incomplete. Osqueda could not hang on, and the ball falls incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. A good shot there by Paul Totten. And you know, more pressure coming now from the Thundering Herd than we saw in the first half. 
That's the downside of having a big league like West Virginia. 28 to 3, you think it's over. Your emotional system shuts down. Unfortunately, nobody told Marshall this game was over. I don't know. Jeff Bostic said it wasn't over, even when it was 28 to 3. Second and 10. Zaraway for five, for seven. And of course, this was the offense they used to build that big lead. Pounding away with the excellent running of Zaraway and Curtis Keaton. It'll be third down and about three from the 42. And now they're going to a no huddle offense. Zaraway spinning away from a tackler, but he cannot pick up the first down. He could not get out of the arms of Larry McLeod. So it is going to be fourth down, West Virginia. But there are flags down on the field. Let's see if because uh, they went to that no huddle offense, if there was some kind of motion on the play. There's the redshirt sophomore, Mark Bolger. And this has certainly shocked and quieted this huge crowd, about 70,000. Please decline, fourth down. So for the third consecutive series in the second half, it's three and out for West Virginia. Moss will drop back to receive the punt of Brian Bauman. So much of football is emotion, and right now, the uh, emotion, number one, and momentum are parked over on the thundering herd sideline. Snap a little high, but there's no pressure. Fielded at the four-yard line by Moss. Starts left, down he goes. Moss fielded it inside his five-yard line, and Dave Lightcap made him pay. A 52-yard punt, and the thundering herd is pinned inside the five. You know, what coaches will basically tell you when you're receiving a punt? Stand on the 10-yard line. If it goes over your head, let it go. Well, when you're a player, when you're a player like Randy Moss, you think you can make everything happen. That's exactly right. He goes back to the four-yard line. We talked about running east and west. Lightcap makes the play. Marshall's backed up at their own four-yard line. And this does get the Mountaineer fans back on their feet. Looking for a defensive stand, trying to get outside. It's Chapman. Excuse me, it's Turner. And he gets him out of a hole as he gets across the 15 to the 16-yard line. An 11-yard pickup. And all of a sudden, Turner's running like a man possessed. And Marshall is controlling the line of scrimmage. You know, Gillums, the left tackle, uh, Scarborough, John Wade, these guys are doing a number. I mean, how many times have we called Thornton and Slay? I don't know that we've called their name. Obviously, Gary Stills has been all over the field for West Virginia. Is there a little bit of difference in total yards in the first and second half? Absolutely. And the difference on the scoreboard as well. Marshall is down by four. Fighting for a couple of yards. Not much there. Now Turner picks up maybe two. It'll be second down and about eight from the 18. And once again, the name Gary Stills is called. What a first half he had. Six tackles, three sacks. And he's got to go to work in the second half. We're midway through the third quarter. And if you look at that West Virginia defense, they're lifeless. There is no emotion in that huddle. Look at them, hands on their hips. I think right now they're a little bit in shock. Pennington throws incomplete on the far side. Intended once again for Gerald Long, but it's one of the through the few bad throws that he's made this afternoon, Jeff. He's been very strong he's coming on late in the second half. And the second now, quarter, rather. And now he is getting time to throw the ball. You know, when you can run the football, you know, Turner has broke a couple of runs. Chapman has had a couple of yards running. Remember at halftime, Marshall only had 13 yards rushing. Right now they have 79. Bob Pruitt's team very much back in this football game in Morgantown. They have waited since 1923 for this matchup. Pennington delivers over the middle. Incomplete. Again, intended for long, and he could not hang on. So the Mountaineers hold, and Marshall will punt. 
Great job by the junior cornerback, Nate Terry. Pennington, with plenty of time, gets that arm in front of the ball, breaks it up. Marshall is forced to punt the ball. Nate Terry will be deep to receive the kick. Should be good field position for the Mountaineers. Some pressure up the middle. End over end kick is going to be fielded at the 42 by Terry. Across midfield. Down the near side. He's got a little bit of room. He steps out of bounds as he gets inside the 40. And there are flags down behind the play at the 45-yard line. They're going to get Barrett Green for a clip. And I think he clipped B.J. Summers. Barrett Green, he has a choice to pass him up and collars him upside the head. Wow. Uh, it was almost a clip and a personal foul. Personal foul on the return team. 15-yard penalty. First down. Well, that negates part of an excellent return of that punt. Pushes the football back to the 40-yard line. But still the best field position that West Virginia has had in the second half. They go to work with 6.55 on the third quarter clock. And operate out of the eye formation for one of the few times this afternoon with White in front of Zaraway. Motion man is Foreman. It's White. He's got five. He's got six, maybe seven. That's Anthony Green, and not Larry Roy White. Anthony Green, the redshirt sophomore out of Jersey City, New Jersey, is on now. You know, I think when teams are struggling, you go back to what you do the best. This is a smash mouth football team running the ball. That's Don Nealon's history. Play action. Bolger throws down the middle, almost intercepted. Almost picked off. That was so close to being in the hands of Rogers Beckett, number 42. Great job with the play fake. Look at the linebackers. Beckett gets back, reads. This is one of the worst throws that Bulger's made. This is when your receiver turns into a defensive back. Well, and that's why defensive backs are defensive backs and not receivers. Exactly. It's third down. And about three. Coach Nealon is starting to use a little bit of uh, anti-perspirant over there. With good reason. It's now 28-24. It was 28-3. Bolger sets, waits, delivers incomplete. Could not hang on. In and out of the hands of Green. O'Neal with the pressure. 6-13 to play. And let's see what the Mountaineers decide to do. They're going to have to kick it away again. They had the best field position of the second half, but they do not have a first down offensively in this half. And we're eight and a half minutes into this third quarter. So Moss will be back at the 10-yard line once again. Which remember, remember, Randy, if it goes over your head, <laughs> we're not going to feel it. I wouldn't be surprised if he did, though. Wobbly kick headed for the near sideline. And this time he does let it bounce. All the way down to the one. It was a wobbly kick. He decided not to field it, and they will start from the one with 6-0-1 remaining in the third quarter of play. Good special teams coverage. They were all over that football. The Marshall for the second straight possession will start in a hole. Their last drive started inside the five-yard line. Again, it was Dave Lightcap, obviously a stalwart on the special teams for West Virginia down to cover the punt. 28-24. Football will be spotted at the one-yard line. And I know it's no fun for the center or the quarterback or the offense when you're going to be starting that offense basically in your own end zone. And you know what? This is the best place on the field to throw the ball. A lot of people are Tripping fearful of it. On the return team. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. Half the distance, well, that puts it at the half-yard line. 
And, and the reason I say that this is the best part of the field to throw on is look how much green grass you have and how many people are expecting a pass out of their own end zone. Not many. Turner is the setback. And Pennington trying to squeeze it out to maybe the two or three, and he possibly got up beyond the one, and that's about it. I'll tell you one thing about Chad Pennington. His team was down 28 to three, but he has maintained his composure, and he has brought his team back, starting with that big drive in the second half. Big drive or in second the second quarter, I mean. Yeah. Big second. drive in the second half also. The thing that you like about this guy. He has been pounded by Gary Steele several times. Tough kid that sits in the pocket, throws the ball, and if they hit him, bring it on. Steele's jumped offside. Was he drawn or did he just go? He's so quick. He's not that quick. <laughs> 5-18 remaining in the third quarter. 14 unanswered points here for Marshall in the second half. And they have scored the last 21 points in this football game. They have a delay on the offense. So defense, they'll offset, still second down. I don't know, how does that work, Jeff? How can you have delay of game and offsides? I, I think this is the first time I've ever heard it. Uh, it's either delay of game, which negates the offsides. That's an interesting call. I think that's what they're talking about right now. Well, let's double check this because I have never heard those two penalties offset. I always thought the delay of game would precede anything that happened. Once it's a delay of game, it should be a dead ball. Well, they're going to sort it out. It's going to be second down and 10. It's 28-24, West Virginia. Pennington throws the football incomplete, a little too long for Randy Moss. And if Moss had gotten to that football, it would have been see you later time. And these corners with West Virginia are getting away with murder. Nate Terry on that play, the ball was in the air, and he's got his hands on Randy Moss all the way 15, 20-yard line. I'm surprised the officials aren't flagging that. to play third quarter and Moss will have to regroup it's third down maybe a yard for low Turner it'll be fourth down and it could be that that punt that rolled to the one may turn this around for West Virginia. You're starting to see emotion once again in the West Virginia defense and along their bench. They should have good field position. Can they turn around and capitalize on it? That's the question. Well, first things first, they need to make a first down here in the third quarter. They have not done that yet. They have had the ball four times, and it's been three and out every time. Remember, if the punter steps out of the back of the end zone, it's a safety. Gets the kickoff. At the 45-yard line, from behind, he is ridden down. Great tackle made defensively there by B.J. Summers. He's had a pretty strong game this afternoon. But it's still excellent field position. The ball is inside the 45 at the 43-yard line, and that is where the Mountaineers will put it in play for the fifth time in the second half and still looking for their initial first down. Bulger has gone all the way at quarterback. He looked very impressive the first two quarters of this game. He has struggled. But he does not seem to bother his composure. Ready to go to work. Amos Zaraway that takes four Marshall players, maybe five, before they stop his forward progress after a gain of nine. Now it's Zaraway to get things going for West Virginia. And it's amazing 
when the players start getting into it, the fans do, and they both feed off of one another. We talked about his power, how strong he is in the weight room. Good block. White on McLeod. He keeps those legs turning. He has stood straight up. Now that's some of that weight work paying off right there. His legs are still turning. Zaraway, 14 carries, 111 yards. He has two touchdowns for West Virginia. He has the football, trying to get outside. First down, hit from behind, and that pushes him inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. He was cracked down from behind that time by Larry McLeod, who's covering as much of this field as he can, but West Virginia now is on the move. They get the first down. Whenever you're struggling, go back to what you do best. Hand the ball to Amos Zaraway and let him create. Great cut. Summers can't make the tackle. And you're talking about yards after you're being hit. That's five more. First down, 10. Ball at the 28. Clock running. 3-10 to play third quarter. Foreman in motion. The give is straight ahead to the fullback. Trying to power his way is Leroy White, and he is shoved back by the center of that defensive line. People like Ricky Hall, Paul Cotton, B.J. Cohen. And Cohen's playing without his helmet again. <laughs> He's done that twice now. You know what? It's amazing to me. I think guys like that take their helmet off because they know they're on television, and they want mom and dad to see them. He actually loses a yard on the play. Back to the 29. It'll be second down and 11. As Coach Pruitt, his team has battled valiantly this afternoon and gotten right back in the football game down by just four points. Quick pass is complete near side to Foreman, but he's not going to get very far. He'll get maybe a yard, and that is about it. Thomas Maxwell leading the charge for Marshall. You know, right now, Marshall is quicker than West Virginia. They are getting to the ball. Uh, they are swarming the ball, four, five, six hats at the ball. And right now, it seems to me West Virginia is a little bit tired. And, and you mentioned it early in the show, John. This has not been the typical type of weather around here. It's been cool for much of this fall practice. Today, it's very warm. And we have an injured player on the Marshall side of the field. The trainers will come out and attend to him. We saw some cramps earlier in the ball game. It's Larry Moore who is down, a senior out of Danville, Virginia. And if they work on his legs, it may be more cramping. And of course, the concern when you move up from Division I AA to Division I-A, how deep are you? How strong can you be in the second half? And that's what Bob Pruitt said yesterday. He says, you know, we want to win this game. He said, but more importantly, we want to get away from here without getting people hurt. Next week, they play Army. Army is notorious for running the football, wishbone. You know, Army may throw the ball seven or eight times a game. He'd like as many healthy bodies on that defense, but he's got to be very encouraged by watching what his defensive front seven have done the last five or six minutes of the second quarter and the entire third quarter. Larry Moore will be helped off the field. It'll be third down and long yardage. Third and still just about 11 to go for the Mountaineers and their sophomore quarterback, Mark Bulger. Trying to come up with something to keep this drive alive. West Virginia is 0 for its last seven third down plays. Out of the shotgun. Bulger rolls, looks, throws, incomplete. Intended for Foreman, and he had D.J. Summers all over him. Don Nealon has got an interesting decision to make here. Third down and 11. This would be this would be a 47-yard field goal. How confident in, in, in your kicker are you? That's basically what you're asking yourself right now. Well, we'll find out. He is going to go for the field goal attempt. Jay Taylor last year was 15 of 24. One more tight end, Anthony Brecht on the field on this kicking team. A 47-yard field goal attempt. To stretch the lead back to seven. The kick is up. Is it long enough? It is, but it's no good. Marshall holds. The thundering herd will take over the football. A change of possession comes with a minute and 37 seconds to go. 
So West Virginia made their move. And the thundering herd will have the football back. And you can hear the Marshall fans. They were pretty quiet for about the first 20 minutes of this football game, but no longer. They are down in the north end zone, and they are whooping it up right now. Quick pass is incomplete. Intended for Randy Moss, and the guy that's been his buddy in his pocket all day right there was Nate Terry. And I'll tell you what, I think Nate Terry has done a pretty good job. Of course, as you said, they've been very physical with him, which I think probably was part of their plan. He's done a phenomenal job, and we remember these statistics. Early in the second quarter, West Virginia had 186 yards total offense to Marshall 72. I think that's somewhat changed. Certainly have. Marshall has dominated this game from the midway point of the second quarter. 21 unanswered points. Turner's got a lot of room. 40, 45. Cuts it back at the 50. They run him down inside the 40-yard line. Cogdell caught up with him, but this guy, for a backup to Chapman, is putting on a show. And it's not like Chapman... Uh came into this game with uh, having to prove himself. Last year as a freshman, rushed for over 1,300 yards. So that is a gain of 30 there by Turner. Six foot, 180 pound sophomore. And it starts up front. The offensive line, Gillums, great job. Wade, they're pushing the West Virginia front back off the line of scrimmage. When your safeties and your cornerbacks are starting to be the first people to hit the running backs, you know your offensive line's doing a number. And I think they're checking out Cogdell out there. He made the tackle. Is there a problem with his wrist? Watch the offensive line. Look at Wade. It's like a wave. You also got to throw in John White. If you're going to ever run the ball and you're going to have a tight end in the game, the tight end must be a blocker. White, six foot six, 244 pounds, and only a junior. They sealed the line. He kicked out the outside guy, and that opened the hole. 30 yards later, it's a first down at the 40 yard line. At the 40. Was he in bounds? The official says yes. No, he says no. It was Moss trying to make the catch right along the sideline in front of the West Virginia bench and stay in bounds, but he could not do it. And we remember at halftime, Marshall had 13 yards rushing. Right now, they have 111. And Pennington is having so much more time to sit in the pocket and throw the ball. Why? They have gained 98 yards rushing, 98 yards rushing in this third quarter. Moss, of course, with his kick returns. And the Thundering Herd has scored 21 consecutive points. Total yards, they have moved past West Virginia, and it's been zero away, but uh, they've not really gotten him untracked in the second half. They have only gained 60 yards, West Virginia, since the midway point of the second quarter. Well, sometimes, as you pointed out then and have gone back to, when you jump ahead so easily and so quickly, 28 to 3, and it looked like it was going to be a breeze, but I tell you, you don't have a group of kids who go undefeated in a season all the way to a Division I AA championship. You don't have a lot of quitters there. You know that. Well, there's one of them that hasn't quit. B.J. Cohen, he's been all over the field for this defense. And that was one of the concerns Bob Pruitt had. How would my undersized defensive tackles match up against a big offensive line that West Virginia has? And they've done very well. But to get inside the huddle of your favorite Big East team, go online at the official Big East Conference website. The internet address is www.bigeast.org for all of the football and conference news from around the Big East. How about a, how about a what if? What if West Virginia had not blocked that punt? That's right. And what if Zeraway hadn't broke that 51-yard touchdown run? That's true. Okay, but what if Lowe Turner had not broken a 53-yard touchdown run? You know, it, the, the old story about ifs and buts, right? <laughs> uh, they're back in the thundering herd on second down and 10 from the 40. That one was almost picked off. A nifty little play as they tried to bring Moss back over the middle. But that could have been disaster right there. And you talk about an interesting offensive set. Five wide receivers 
no tight end, no running back. If Randy Moss catches this ball, he may still be running. Same thing for the West Virginia defender. He might still be going. This offense has been brilliant on third down. Another opportunity, third down and 10. That's what really started it for them when they were able to convert those two third and longs there midway through the second quarter. Pressure coming, and that one is up for grabs and incomplete. Tremendous pressure up the middle that time defensively for West Virginia, and it was Bob Baum who led the charge. It'll be fourth down. And now Marshall is going to try and do the same thing that West Virginia has. Play field position. Very important for this punter to leave this ball inside the 20-yard line. I know it makes your stats look better if you kick it in the end zone. It helps your team if you can put that thing 10, 15-yard line. Well, let's find out what Nate Terry can do. Will they try to angle it to the sideline or just kick it high and let it float? Fair catch is called for. Flags are down. The ball is in the end zone, but there's another flag down at the three-yard line. This is not going to be a good play for the Mountaineers. We had flags all over the place. One back where the punt was made. Another where there was punt coverage down inside the five-yard line. Let's sort this all out. Don Nealon wants to know what's going on. I would not want the job of the referees. Those guys in those uh, zebra suits, they have to try and run up and down the field with these young guys and, you know, keep everybody playing within the rules and sort all this stuff out. It's much easier being a player. Nealon getting the information from one of the officials. Personal foul, roughing the kicker on the defense. First down. Get a ball. Once again, a slow snap. That's a, a very low snap. The ball is away. Wow. Yeah, Carl. Bomb crashing into him. Now watch this at the other end, bottom left of your screen. This is a takedown. That's a Larry Mahan special. That's a lasso. Okay. Grabs him around the neck. Ahead. It's first and 10 at the 25-yard line. And I said that was a very costly play for the Mountaineers. We have 41 seconds left in the third quarter. And this crowd is in shock. Pennington looking long. He's got a man wide open. Touchdown. It's Moss. And Marshall has the lead. Unbelievable. This team has a huge heart. Down at one point, 28 to 3. They take the first lead of the day. Who do you go to? Randy Moss. And he was wide open, too, Jeff. And I'll go back to this. Pennington has much more time to throw the ball once they started running the football. Turner, Chapman, gaining yards on the ground. 98 yards they've gained on the ground this quarter. Well, you can't take away both things. If you can run it, it's much easier to throw it. This is an important extra point. It just squeezes through to make it a three-point lead. The thundering herd has come all the way back to lead this football game. Play action, Pennington, all the time in the world. Is Randy Moss for real? Yes, he is. Looks like he's going to run an out. Then he just turns on that speed, and he blows right by he Barrett gets Green. by Barrett Green. Easy catch, easy throw, easy touchdown. This is shocking, isn't it? And this is the first full week of college football. And you know there are fans sitting in the stands all over the country. And you know when they flash those scores up on the board? West Virginia, Marshall. 31-28, Marshall. There will be big oohs and big ahs. Six plays, 
70 yards and only took him a minute and two seconds. Moss has certainly done nothing that was not expected. He's returned punts, he's returned kickoffs, he's caught passes, he has two touchdowns in the ball game. So you have now 27 more to go? He's got 26 more to oh, equal his, his same total from last year receiving. Well, let's see if the Mountaineers now can answer. They have been quiet. Keaton fields it at the four. Wrestled down from behind as he gets across the 20 to maybe the 22-yard line. He was tackled there by Javon Darling, and there is Randy Moss. He's the real thing. Well, Don Nealon was very much aware of Randy Moss and what he could do. And they have done their best to stop him. At that time, just a brilliant move by him as he cut it back upfield and used that blazing speed. This is going to be a personal foul against Marshall. Lamar Martin. Backup linebacker, sophomore, at the end of this play, grabs David Robinson, slings him around, throws his helmet off. This is going to be a 15-yard personal foul. You have a flagrant personal foul on the defense. The player is ejected. First down, 15-yard penalty. Out of the game. <laughs> Let's see if that gets him fired up. Lamar Martin is gone. I think that may be a little bit se severe. He certainly, uh, he took Richardson's helmet and just threw it about halfway across the field, but I'm not sure ejection is the right thing. They'll march it all the way to the 37-yard line, and that's where the Mountaineers will go to work. These are the guys that are doing the work. Right here for this offense, the Thundering Herd, John White, a big block in the big run by Turner. Their offensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage. And this defense, the West Virginia defense, that gave up 217 yards last year, right now have yielded 328 yards to this offense. And it's 28 unanswered points by the Thundering Herd. Mr. Momentum is on the side of Marshall. He has been camped there since midway through the second quarter. I know this has been a long quarter, but can you imagine how long it is for Don Nealon and all his football players? Very long. But it also means there's still plenty of time. And it's only a three-point game. Zaraway, 40, 45. He's got maybe 10 yards on the play. Amos Zaraway says, give me that football. Rogers Beckett made the tackle. It is close to a first down. Good job by the offensive line. Wabel, the tight end, with a great block. Great stick by the Marshall defense. They are still getting to the ball. That's the end of the third quarter. We've got a football game. Come back with us right now. Marshall leading 31-28. 15 minutes remain. Don't leave us. We've got a barn burner going in Morgantown. The first quarter and a half belonged to West Virginia. They build a 28-3 lead. The second quarter and a half belongs to Marshall. They outscored them 28 to nothing, so here we are. In every aspect, offensively, defensively, special teams, you name it, West Virginia did not record a first down in the third quarter. And the movement all over the place, and the flags go with it that follow, and you can see that B.J. Cohen was in the backfield a tad early. You think this guy's not proud of his football team? He should be. Offside. Defense. Five-yard penalty. That'll be a first down then first for the down. Mountaineers, led by Mark Bulger. Is that their first one of the second half? No, they did on that last drive. Remember, they oh, that's right. picked up a first down. But it took them five possessions to get that first, first down in the second half. But there's still plenty of time to turn it around. We have just begun the fourth quarter of play. I'm John Sanders along with Jeff Bostic. Glad you could join us. And you better not leave. Zaraway pounds it down to the 45 and spins away from even more tacklers to get it to the 43-yard line in the arms of John Grace. Initial stop by number four, John Grace. 
Marshall's defensive tackle, Mercer, number 93, had an opportunity, tried to arm tackle Zeraway. You're not going to bring this kid down arm tackling him. It'll be second down and five from the 43-yard line. Mountaineers send two wide receivers wide left. And hand the ball to Zeraway, trying to get outside. Head down, he pounds his way inside the 40, down to near the 37. B.J. Summers made the tackle, but that should be enough for a West Virginia first down. Great job by the tight end, Anthony Beck. You wonder why a running back gets around the corner. Watch the far right side of your screen. Caves in the entire left side of that. Marshall defensive side, zero away with nothing but open air. What a powerful running back. Got some help from Leroy White again as well as fullback. And Davey, and Davey Crockett's here. <laughs> the Mountaineers trying to stir things up. They have been on their heels. There's the play action fake. Bolger now out of the pocket, throws it incomplete. He dumped it short and tended to Ivy. Corey Ivy could not hang on. That pocket finally collapsed. It'll be second down and 10 at the 37 yard line. Bolger seems a little bit panicked right now. Early in the game, he had a great deal of poise. He had a lot more time. That's right, that makes a difference, doesn't it? Let's compare the two quarterbacks. Pennington coming on strong. He's thrown it 15 more times. Bolger, 50% completion. Foreman is in motion. It's zero away. Spins off one tackle and down he goes at the 40. Not that time. McLeod makes the hit, but he bounced off of one of his own men trying to get outside. If you look at these two teams right now, Marshall seems to be the team that's the freshest. They seem to be the one, the least affected by the heat. And that's not what you would expect would happen. You know what, Solomon Page, his big left tackle, gets driven back in the backfield. He's the one that should get credited for the tackle on Zeraway. Third down and 13. West Virginia down by three. We're in the fourth quarter, out of the shotgun. Bolger looking down that far sideline. Pass is incomplete. Just out of the reach of Pat Green. It'll be fourth down. This is where they miss a guy like David Sanders. Absolutely. I mean, this guy, an All-American candidate, and this is the difference in the game. Pennington is hitting his All-American. And right now, Bolger, he really doesn't have a go-to guy. Well, they're trying to decide what is going to happen. They're going to punt. With 13, 23 to go. That's Randy Moss. I'm sure he will stay around after the game and clean up. Sweep up the debris. He's done everything else. As advertised. Delay of game? Yes. Which really doesn't hurt him too much at this portion of the field. Delay of the game on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. You made a good point about Moss. He has so much confidence in his abilities. That's why he will try to field a punt inside the five yard line. All great players do. When you see the great players, there's no situation they don't think they can bring something back. They, they, they can't make the tackle, whatever it might be. Great players try and make great plays and often do. This one kicks into the end zone. It will come out to the 20 with 13-13 to play in the game. A good attempt by the Mountaineers, but Hernandez could not get there. So it'll be from the 20 yard line. And now you know what Coach Pruitt is looking for. Let's have a nice sustained march. We'll find out if they can do that when we come back to Morgantown on Mountaineer Field after this. Welcome back to Mountaineer Field. And Jeff, no matter what happens in the final 13 minutes here, we've gotten what we wanted, an exciting football game. And every one of the fans at this stadium have gotten exactly what they wanted. Uh, maybe not everybody at this point. <laughs> well, there's still 13 minutes. That's right. First and 10. Pennington pumps, then goes down the middle incomplete. And that time Moss slipped and fell down. The pass was a little bit behind him. 
It will be second down and 10. And of course, with all the passing that we've had, maybe more for West Virginia than we, we expected this afternoon. John Wade has got a cramp right now, ladies and gentlemen. He's yeah. down on the turf. And that is the third thundering herd player to cramp up. And of course, this is the point of the game where I think most people figured the advantage would be to West Virginia because they're Division I A. They're generally a little bigger. People think they're better conditioned, but you know, heart has something to do with it on the other side of that football. Don't ever underestimate the heart in football, the emotional aspect of it. And I think, you know, as much as as much as a coach has tried to uh, duplicate a game, it's not the same speed. We'll be back. Nothing has changed since we went away because John Wade, the senior center for the Thundering Herd, is still down. These leg cramps at this time of the year are awfully painful. He has been down for a while, and of course, he is such a key part of this Marshall offense as the anchor to that offensive line. Now West Virginia's defense is going to come over to the bench to figure out a way to put a stop on here. It's second down and 10 when we do resume under bright, sunny skies, and temperature right around 80 degrees. And Marshall's offensive coordinator, Tim Nunez, he was talking about John Wade yesterday, says he is so excited to play this game for the simple fact it is against West Virginia. And secondly, he gets to play against Thornton and Slay. Absolutely. He likes to see how he's matched up. And a better remember. way to find out. And I think Randy Moss was kind of in the same boat. He said, I want to see what I can do at this level. And there's not much else he could do at Division One Double A, certainly. You look at the schedule coming up for the Mountaineers, for example, they have a very tough road schedule, including Miami, Maryland, Syracuse, and Notre Dame on the road. And you know what? If you go back to last season, they won the first seven games in a row. Well, it was that blocked punt that turned their season around. And you know what? They lost the last four out of five games. Looked very impressive early in this game. It'll take about three men and a small boy to get him off the field. I talked with him yesterday on the field, and it's amazing to me how big the game has become. This is a center that is six foot six, 302 pounds. What'd you play at? At my heaviest, I was about 275. But I held very well. <laughs> Good point. Good I was point. a professional holder. <laughs> These hands were a hands of surgeon. Second down. Ten yards to go. We are back underway. Pennington is rolling, firing. Did he make a catch? No. Moss could not out at the 33-yard line. That would have been enough for a first down. Instead, it is third down and 10. And Moss is heading back to the locker room, apparently. Let's see if we can spot something. Uh, not Moss. Uh, Wade is heading back to the locker room. This is Moss. He cradled it, but it popped out. Crowd trying to get the defense fired up for West Virginia on third and ten. Four wide receivers shotgun formation. Is it intercepted? It was picked off by West Virginia. The interception by the Mountaineers. That was Nate Terry. This is a ball that Pennington would love to have back. He tries to force it in there. Nate Terry has been all over the field. Cole Claw can't get the ball away. Great interception by Nate Terry. Big break for this West Virginia team. The ball is at the 26-yard line. It is first and 10 for the Mountaineers. And now the fans are trying to help the offense. Zaraway outside. Splits the defense, fights his way down to the 22-yard line. Larry McLeod again making the tackle. You talk about a guy that's been all over the field. Number 28 for Marshall has earned his keep today. 150 tackles for this thundering herd defense last season. 
has led them in tackles the past two seasons. He's the heart and soul of that Marshall defense. He's the middle linebacker. Working between O'Neill and Grace. There is Terry who got that interception. Zaraway powers his way inside the 20. Falls forward to about the 18-yard line, maybe the 17-yard line. They need to get the 15-yard line for the first down as the clock winds down to 12 minutes left in the game. West Virginia very content trying to play some smash mouth, see if they can't keep the clock moving and get the chains moving and get this thing in the end zone and get the lead back. Third down and two. And I think now they're in four down territory too, Jeff. If need be. Foreman in motion. Little delay, Zaraway trying to fight for the first down and he's close. He is so close. You talk about heart, that kid's got some. That is second, third, and fourth effort. First down. At the 15-yard line. Everybody in the stadium knows who's going to get the football. He gets hit about two yards in the backfield. Look at those legs and look at that body lane. But this for West Virginia, Jeff, that's their first third down, third down conversion since the first quarter. Again, Foreman in motion. Bolger rolls, throws, he's got a man wide open. Five-yard line, diving for the end zone. Touchdown, West Virginia! Wavell, the tight end, gets into the end zone. What a beautiful play. And extra effort by Wavell. West Virginia goes back on top. Do you think Zaraway draws a little bit of attention? <laughs> Just a little. Wable is wide open. Bulger leads him. Look at this effort. Sticks the ball right on top of the pylon. Touchdown. And the official right there goes up with the hands. The extra point is up and good. And West Virginia is up by four. The Mountaineers come back after 28 unanswered. A beautiful play, a tremendous effort by Wable, and West Virginia has the lead over Marshall in Morgantown. We'll be back. 35-31. We told you not to leave. Still over 11 minutes remaining. A tremendous effort by Wable, the tight end. The big tight end, pre-med student. One of those three pre-med students on the offense, and everybody knows that offensive players are always much more intelligent than the other side of the ball. Oh, that's a given. <laughs> but this is all set up on that interception by Nate Terry. That's exactly right. It was a 26-yard four-play drive, but Nate Terry's interception is the one that put them in business. They punched it in from there. I think it will be a big key for this Marshall offense to get John Wade back on the field if he can. The Mountaineers have regained the lead. You cannot hide Randy Moss, but they'll wait until the last second before they split off. Moss gets it at about the 12-yard line. 25, spins away from one tackler and gets out across the 30 to the 32. Seth Lyle made the stop on the special teams. And they're trying to hide him back there. He's a little bigger than everybody else, though. But what they should do, you know, they, they should probably take Wicks and put him behind <laughs> Moss because then Wicks could actually hide. This is the guy they wanted to have the ball in the hand. Moss last year, 34-yard average on kick returns. Got another 20 there. Exciting football player. And having a discussion with one of the officials. The ball spotted at the 32-yard line. I think we I think we have West Virginia that's oh, offsides. Okay. That means we're going to do it again, eh? Yep, it would appear we're going to kick over. With 10:58 to play in the game and West Virginia back on top by 4. I would be tempted to take the ball at the 32-yard line. Personally. I would too. That's not bad field position. But of course, you don't have number 88. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tell you what, this game has been everything it was billed to be. Everybody thought West Virginia would take this uh, Marshall team and just destroy them. 
and early it looked that way. Well, a lot of people in Marshall didn't think that way. Well, if you talk to the West Virginia people, they thought this was going to be a cakewalk. Well, when it's 28 to 3, what and, are you going to do? And think, all, right? of the, all of the local radio and television stations, uh, instead of the backyard brawl, it was just going to be a, a backyard, you know, butt kicking. <laughs> but this Marshall team down 28 to 3 at one time, and we kept talking about it. They have shown heart, and they've shown heart and more heart. They're going to have another opportunity right now. Kicks this one pretty good. Yes, well done by West Virginia. I would have taken the ball at the 32-yard line. That's what you said. Instead, they'll get it at the 20. Great job by Jay Taylor. He kicked one in the end zone earlier. This time, he does it from five yards farther back. And this cost your team 12 yards. And that really, you think, okay, it's only 12 yards, but that's not true. You, because a different offensive mindset when you're at the 20 than the 32, right? Exactly. You can run more of your offense. But this team, this Marshall offense, they throw the ball from anywhere. That's right. Now the West Virginia fans trying to fire up their defense. First and 10 at the 20. Shovel pass. It's loose. And it's going to be incomplete. I tell you, they were very fortunate on that play. Bennington now 16 of 39. He has been intercepted twice and thrown three touchdowns. But just one of his last 12, and that was the touchdown pass to Moss. Second down and 10 from the 20. And the noise level is increasing as the clock winds down. Pennington sets. He delivers the football incomplete. In and out of the hands of Colclaw, who was stretching out trying to make the catch, could not. It's third down and ten. Big down for this Marshall offense. They have been phenomenal on third down. Well, I tell you what really turned this game around, at least helped get them back in the lead, were those third and longs in that drive midway through the second quarter. They've got another one here. It's third and ten. Moss is the receiver nearest to you at the bottom of the screen. Pennington is going to take time out. It comes with 10.44 to play. It's 35-31. The Mountaineers leading the thundering herd. Stay with us. Big play in this football game. Third down and 10 from the 20. Do you expect pressure from West Virginia to try to get to Pennington? I wouldn't be surprised to see a blitz. Watch it right off the edge. Nate Terry, here he comes. Shotgun formation. There's the push. There's the throw. It's intercepted again. Again, it's Nate Terry. Second one in a row for Terry right at the 35-yard line. Pocket started to collapse late. Guess who? Gary Steeles. Looks like the ball's intended for Nate Terry. He catches it. He has come up big in this fourth quarter. Boy, has he ever. This West Virginia defense looked for somebody to stand up and be a leader, and he has been that one person. They also got the good pressure that time from Baum and from Stills. Gives them the football at the 35-yard line of Marshall. First down and 10. Zaraway fights his way to the 30. Down to the 25. Leans for a first down. Amos Zaraway. Thomas Maxwell made the tackle, but that extra lean gives him a new four yard, four down. <laughs> we talked about the freshness of that Marshall defense. Look at them now. All their defenders, hands on hips, breathing hard, and the emotional part of it has come back to West Virginia. Well, here's part of the problem. The last two times when they've had to come out, the ball's already been deep in your own territory. Thanks to the two interceptions by Terry. Fullback straight ahead, down to the 15-yard line. That's the backup 
Anthony Green, the sophomore out of Jersey City, New Jersey, showing some power right up the middle. They've only run that play a couple of times, Jeff, but it's worked both times. When you have when you have fullbacks that are 240 pounds, and look at the people moving. Zaraway moving to your left, and Green is a big six foot two, 200. He's a power back, and he is punishing people. West Virginia, two carries in this uh, drive, 22 yards. It is second and very short. Zaraway first down near the 12 or 13 yard line is where they will spot it, and West Virginia will get four more. John Grace coming up to make the tackle, number four. Great job trying to strip the football. But I tell you what's happened. Once they regained the lead, they got good field position. They have gone back to West Virginia football. But what they have to do, Marshall's defense has to hold West Virginia to a field goal. Regardless, they're going to have to still score a touchdown. The defense has to stand up right now. As tired as they think they are, they got to reach down and go for a little bit more. Zaraway, 158 yards on 24 carries. He gets it again. Carry number 25 fighting his way to the two-yard line behind Chad Wabel. It'll be very close to first. It is first and goal. We talked about the Marshall offensive line controlling the line of scrimmage. Boy, they did there. Now West Virginia's doing it. Zaraway not even touched until he's six yards past the line of scrimmage. First and goal for West Virginia. Beckett and Summers in that secondary had to make the tackle. The Mountaineers on the move, trying to add to a 35-31 lead. It's the fullback, stopped at the one. That's Leroy White, and he met a wall in the middle that time, led by Andre O'Neill. It'll be second and goal. The ball is at about the one-yard line. What are the chances Amos Zaraway gets this ball? I'd say pretty good. It's going to be a double tight end formation as Anthony Becht comes on the field. Wavell, of course, is the other tight end. They take out two wide receivers and they will go power football right here. Just outside the one yard line. Marshall trying to dig in. Zaraway leaping into the end zone for a touchdown. But there is a flag down. At the line of scrimmage, hold everything. Offside. Defense was lined up offside. No, be declined. The touchdown is good. Third these, touchdown of the day for Zaraway. These are the toughest yards in football. Watch Leroy White. Cuts down McLeod. Zaraway over the top. His third touchdown of the afternoon. The extra point is good. And just like that, the turnovers have helped the Mountaineers regain control. Zaraway powers it in. Touchdown number three. It's 42-31, WVU. Amos Saraway, a career game of rushing the football on the ground at 170 yards, and he has matched his career high with three touchdowns this afternoon. A well-deserved rest. Well, it's almost like he said in the fourth quarter, hey, give me that football. Let's see what Randy Moss can do something here. He's going to field this ball at the five, drops it, picks it up. In trouble at the 20, trying to weave his way through traffic, and down he goes. And, of course, the thing you worry about here if your marshal is still another turnover because you know they're going to put the football in the air, and they have turned it over the last two possessions. And if you're Pennington, you wonder about that uh, West Virginia defense just pinning their ears back. Gary Steele's already has three sacks for the day. Knowing that they've got to throw the football. You think they might cut it loose a little bit here. They will have their motor revved up. Well, West Virginia has answered the challenge. Marshall has had fought its way back to a three-point lead. But two straight touchdowns for the Mountaineers. 
Turner on the ground, gets outside, cut down as he crosses the 25 and falls forward to the 27 in the arms of Cogdell. That's an interesting call when you're 11 points down with seven and a half minutes to go. Your enemy is not West Virginia, it's the clock. That's right, and it is rolling right now. It's a nice pickup on the play of about seven and a half yards. But you need yardage and clock stoppage is what you need. In a hurry. An 11 point lead for the Mountaineers. Pennington in trouble and down. He does get across the 30 and pick up the first down. Well, Pennington able to fight forward. Kevin Landot was one of them in there defensively as they've gone to some of the backup linebackers right now, trying to keep fresh bodies on the field as best they can. It is first and 10 at the 32. That's Brian Reed, the right guard that's down on the field. They're He's from Charleston, West Virginia, one of the West Virginians playing in this football game. And I'm not sure whether he has a knee problem or could be another of the leg cramps. Interesting, the, the cramping that's gone on on the field has all been Marshall players for the most part. I don't recall any West Virginia players going down with the leg cramp. And if you'll take a close look at those offensive linemen for Marshall, you know, just below their pants, those, those black circles right. that are, are just on their calves, these are, these are knee braces. And when it's a warm game, believe me, these things cut off the blood and... You know what, after a long, hot day, you sweated, you've lost probably 10, 12, 15 pounds. Something's got to give. And you see the turnovers have been costly to Bob Pruitt's club, especially the last two after they had come back and taken the lead. And this is on top of the block punt for a touchdown. That's right. This Marshall team, regardless of what happens in the next six and a half minutes, can be very proud of the way they played this football game. Well, they were buried at one point in this game, 28 to 3, but they fought their way back to lead 31 to 28. But then West Virginia, with a couple of interceptions by Nate Terry, here comes pressure from Stills. The pass is completed midfield. Making the catch, his first of the day is John Cooper. He's a redshirt freshman from Alexandria, Virginia. All the way out to the 50 and a gain of 18 yards on the play. Pennington barely gets rid of this football. Steals is bearing down. Great catch. There is no quit. There is no quit in this Marshall football team. He got sandwiched. Pennington needs to get into an ice bath tomorrow. Or maybe tonight. <laughs> Clock running. 6-10 to play. We're in the fourth quarter. This has been a great afternoon of football. Pass completed and knocked away. A good pop that time knocks it out of the hands of John White, the tight end. Marshall's big center, John Wade, number 66, is back in the lineup. I know that's got to make Bob Pruitt and his coaching staff very happy. That would make you think it was what you thought, cramping. Because if he had had some kind of a knee injury, he would probably not return. And Brian Reed, the right guard who was injured a few plays ago, he's back in the lineup. Second and ten at the 50. The tailback with it, that's Chapman. It's down inside the 50 to maybe the 48, a gain of two. It'll be third down. And about eight coming up. Stills and Thornton double-teaming on the tackle. We have not heard too much of Henry Hank Slay this afternoon. He has been very quiet, as has Thornton. This offensive line for Marshall, particularly Wade and Reed, have done a great job blocking these two. Another huge play for Pennington because it's third and long. Out of the shotgun. Here comes pressure. And down he goes. They got him back at the 45-yard line. And you know who was in the middle of it. There he is. If you're a West Virginia fan, number 55 has been all over the field. 
simply outruns Jamie Rogers, the junior offensive tackle. It's easy to say that a guy with, with the type of speed that Stills has is going to outrun a 326-pound offensive tackle. And you saw Ryan Price getting in there as well, number 51. But that kid has had a heck of a day. Fair catch called for at the 15-yard line and fielded right there. Fielding it was old Surehands himself, Nate Terry. He had two of the biggest plays this afternoon in this football game when he picked off passes on consecutive series. If you're Don Nealon and you're giving away some awards this weekend, tops of the list has got to be Gary Stills from, from the defensive aspect, along with Nate Terry. And offensively, it's been the Amos Zaraway show. Especially when it became power time in the third quarter, and they had to have the offense to put that ball in the end zone. He is the man that delivered. First and ten from the 19-yard line. Guess who? Zaraway's got a little bit of a seam, and then he's knifed down as he crosses the 15-yard line, gets maybe to the 18. Oh, not made by number nine, Maxwell. It'll be second and about seven. From the 18, and Don Nealon's team will be happy to keep that clock running now. And you wonder what will West Virginia take from this game? Uh, they're going to find out that their offense has been very inconsistent today. Their defense needs some work and maybe some conditioning, but he's got to be proud of this team's heart. That's the backup, Keaton, carrying the football, and Keaton gets to the 20-yard line. It'll be third down and five. This has almost been like three different football games, if you think about it. The quick start for West, West Virginia, beginning with the block punt. Then, obviously, Marshall really took control of the middle part of the ball game, all the way to the point where they had a three-point lead, and then it turned again. And the thing about it, Marshall has been their own worst enemy. You know, the interceptions, the great plays by Nate Terry, set up two scoring opportunities, and have given West Virginia the lead. Loose football, loose football. We also have a flag down in the middle. John Grace. Dead ball. Illegal snap on the center. So it's a dead ball. Forget the fumble. He said illegal procedure on the center. That doesn't happen, does it? Uh, it never happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you ever forget the snap count? Yes, I did. <laughs> and it's like the it's like the guy in the marching band that's going the wrong direction, and his parents are sitting up in the stands, and his parents his parents say, uh, well, you, "You're going to see it, Eric DeGroe." Oh, 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 oh! I snapped it a little <laughs> bit early. I, I think I'll I'll hold it. <laughs> You let know, me let me take that back and yeah. put it back on the ground. You know, <laughs> and and I've done that before. And once I started it moving, uh, the quarterback was going to get it. He may get it a little bit early, but he's going to get it. He might not be expecting it, but he was going to get it, right? That's Curtis Keaton. He'll get it out to about the 19-yard line. It'll be fourth down, and West Virginia will punt it away. Inside two and a half minutes remaining in this football game, and as advertised, I think the entire state of West Virginia can be proud of what they've seen here today. It's been a terrific game. I don't think anybody has left the stands. Not very many. There are a few people heading out now. You can see them walking down the hillsides and toward the parking lot that separates the stadium from the beautiful medical complex over here. You know, Bob Pruitt can be awfully proud of his football team also. I mean, they were down 28 to 3. They 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 showed the heart of a champion and came back, took the lead, and unfortunately late in the game became their own worst enemy. Well, Randy Moss has been everything we expected, whether it be returning, receiving. They angle this one out of bounds. Let's see where they spot it. It's going to be good field position for the Thundering Herd at about the 46-yard line of West Virginia. So Brian Bauman, another short punt in his effort to keep it away. Only a 28-yard kick. Earlier he had a six-yard kick. 
it will give Marshall the football with a minute 41 remaining in the game. And West Virginia has battled back here in the fourth quarter to go up by 11. Well, we hope you've enjoyed it. I have. I'm John Sanders along with Jeff Bostic. Look forward to working with you as the Big East season goes along, Jeff. Should be an interesting year. I mean, obviously, West Virginia is a, a talented team. Syracuse up there with, with all of them in the country. Miami, it ought to be interesting. Pennington drops it inside to Randy Moss, and he is run down from behind by Kevin Lendl. Short of a first down, he gets it inside the 40 down to the 38. It'll be second and short yardage for the Thundering Herd, and they will go without a huddle now as the clock is still moving. A minute, 15 seconds to play. Pennington still throwing. Got his man open and down inside the 15 is Mark Wicks. Barrett Green made the hit on him. They're out of timeout, so the clock will continue to roll. The ball is spotted at the 15-yard line, and we are headed. It's going to be first down, so that will stop the clock momentarily while they reset the chains. A minute, two to go. There's the sack, and that will just about seal it. Speaking of sealing it, it was Gary Stills stepping up. And it is this West Virginia defense. That's five sacks for him. Five this sacks today. There's Moss. What a terrific performance he put on. All-purpose yards, 225. He scored a couple of touchdowns. He gave his team good field position with his kick returns. He has been outstanding. But this one is just about over. This might be the final play of the afternoon. From behind, the ball is loose. Still another sack by Stills. They'll call it an incomplete pass. You know what? The coaches were exactly right with this guy. He is the ever-ready bunny. He keeps going. Oh, he does. And he keeps going. There's eight seconds to go. You've pretty much got the football game in your pocket. And don't you love it? He's got one, he's got one of his arms with a, a, full lead, a full sleeve on. And the other one has none. I, I would love to know the philosophy behind that. Well, there is one. You can bet on that. <laughs> yeah, there's got to be something there. There is Moss. He and his teammates have given it everything this afternoon and actually came back to lead this football game at 31-28. Moss to the near side for maybe the final play. And he certainly is the real deal. No question about that. We have a flag down, delay of game. And believe me, Pennington's not trying to delay this game. That's going to be a sore young man tomorrow morning. But I tell you, he's hung tough. He stayed in there and took his licks and kept firing. He has showed a lot of courage. Dead ball. Delay the game. On the offense, please reset the clock to eight seconds. Eight seconds. Eight seconds remaining, and they're going to fire up the grills again. Out in the parking lots where the tailgating started when? I would say about Wednesday, probably. <laughs> They've been ready for this game for 75 oh, days. Wow, yes. One more time. Over the middle, the pass is knocked away incomplete. And there's still three ticks left on the clock. Broken up by Barrett Green. Cole Claw was the intended receiver. Now, Moss is a heck of an athlete, and he has proven that, whether it's baseball, track, football, basketball. You'll see him playing on Sundays very soon. Uh, probably next year. I would think <laughs> so. He is the top-rated wide receiver in the entire nation as a rising sophomore. Three wideouts will be split to the top of the screen with three seconds to go. <laughs> wow. 
This game is not going to end. Dead ball it's not delay go quietly. on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. For the end zone, up for grabs, intercepted, and that is it. The interception will be credited to Barrett Green, and it was interceptions that keyed this turnaround victory for West Virginia. The final score from Morgantown. The Mountaineers beat the thundering herd. They can start the celebrations now in the Morgantown area. 42-31 is the final. The long-awaited matchup was everything we expected and more. West Virginia comes back in the fourth quarter with a couple of touchdowns to win it 42 to 31. For Jeff Bostic, I'm John Sanders. And it was Amos Zaraway who took charge for the Mountaineers and led them to victory this afternoon. From Morgantown, West Virginia, so long, everyone.